You're listening to Australia's national youth radio station, Triple J. For more info, go to triplej.net.au. Snowball and Terry Siakis with you. No theme. No theme this morning. Oh, no theme at all. Hang on. Oh, you see? Oh. I forgot. Oh. I was getting into Maximo Park and I forgot. That could have all ended badly there. The show hadn't even started, and already there was people all over the place in offices and the like <laughs> thinking to themselves, oh, the st- they've, d- they've dumped the theme. They've uh, they've stopped it. <laughs> There's that fly. I've got... Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a... Already the show is rocking. We've, what, 30 <laughs> seconds we've been talking? Look at that. Uh, the theme was played. Did you get it? Bang. Look at it. There's it's... been a fly in this studio. I kid you not, good people, since... Oh, you've killed it. <laughs> Look at oh. that. And now, of course, oh. everyone thinks it's some sort of radio device that Poor I've... Little Louis. W- what we're going to have... Oh, you're giving them a name. <laughs> Oh, Louis the fly. Sorry. He's I've... been in the studio since you... Are you drawing one of those I'm... body outlines yeah, like I'm you see? Yeah, drawing a chalk line around him there. Look at that. That's... <laughs> in fact... Oh, you really are. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh, it's quite good, actually. Because it's not like a regular body, you know, where it's an actual man shoot. I'll move him out the way. And... Oh, no, he's... oh, he's still kicking. Oh, oh now just... we have to call him Lazarus because he's just come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> he's been in the studio since, what, Tuesday? La- or was it the first show I last think it might week? have even been the first show. This is the second and final week of the show, but last yes. well, last week he's been here the whole time and I thought they only lived for like oh, no, a look, day. Look, he's walking again. Two days. He's, he's actually started to walk again. Are you Jesus? Because you I, touched him I, I and then I, he got up. I think I might be. <laughs> On the subject of Jesus, are you did you kill him again? Are you going to let do, him go? Do you want me to re- kill him again? I just think that yeah, you, I want to see how many times react, he comes back to life. You react. <laughs> we should kill him in various different ways. Can Actually, I just say I, my heart has now just slowed down because when you just went bang, like, I thought, oh my god, Noble's finally cracked the shit. <laughs> and it's been it's in the first two minutes of the show. If we do that, that'd be great, wouldn't it? If you just went right, that was Maximo Park there. <laughs> Why didn't you play the theme? <laughs> How many times this show is only going to work if we play the annoying <laughs> music that excites many people that try and download it as a ringtone, but other people drives them up the wall. That's the way you test what sort of person you are. If you let, if that theme drives you mad, <laughs> this show's probably not for you. Yeah. You save yourself four hours of your life. It's fairly right easy to tell in the first few seconds of the show whether you're going to continue listening. He's sort of strolling a bit now, I think... I don't know whether to kill him or not, because... Uh, see, I respect the fact that he got up again. Yeah. I, I see, respect that. I see we let him just stroll around for All a right. bit. Let's see how far he gets yeah. before we give him another crack. Did you see that uh, thing, on, like I say, on the subject of Jesus? Did you see the thing in uh, the paper uh, that uh, Mel Gibson said about... Uh, he said uh, something like, uh, about the Passion of the Christ, he said, without, like, he won the People's Choice Award, he went, without you, we'd be dead in the water. That's what he said. Surely walking on the water and the film would have been dead and then come back three days later and had a big success. Think it through, Mel. Come he doesn't on. think before he opens his mouth. That's his, that's it, his whole problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> now then, speaking of water, this is my question. See? See what I'm okay. doing? We're it's, all, it's all linked. And that sound there was me just accidentally hitting the mic. This is going to be like the that. best show ever. It really is, just in case you thought that was the sound of this tiny fly. Of my brain kicking in. R- Rocky style, just trying to pull himself up. Adrian! Look at that outline that he's, you've drawn <laughs> around him now that he's gotten up. It looks like... <laughs> it's good, isn't it? It's an like, amoeba. It's quite an exciting shape. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you she... he'll crawl back into it when he's ready to die? <laughs> I think... <laughs> you just go, well, he's... I'll save Ross from drawing another chalk outline of and my body and l- I'll crawl into the just, original. Yeah, lower himself into position. Um, Wouldn't that be funny if that's how you knew when you were going to die? If you were walking down the street and you just saw a chalk outline, you went, oh, my God, that looks like me. Oh, it's time. Well, I'll give, I'll <laughs> I'll give just, it a try. I'll just get in. I'll try that out for size. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what me and my mates used to do. There's a, um, I grew up in a, a place called Newcastle in the north of England, yeah. uh, quite a large city, and there was a place called the Mayfair Ballroom, which was a place where rock used to happen. Oh, and, it doesn't uh, sound like a place where rock would happen. Yeah, I know. But sounds a bit laddie dark. Yeah, and it was quite rough, like, you know, because you'd have, you'd have a sort of a rock night, but then at the same time there was a kind of a, like a sort of townies disco just up the road, mm. and then there was a lot of drunken people, and if there was ever trouble, it was always sort of around there. And above the Mayfair Ballroom was a, a food court. It was like, a, you know, just a... a, a it was the 
the first sort of big food court that opened in Newcastle. A lot of yeah. excitement. And what used to happen is, it was me and a couple of mates, we used to hang around in this food court, just basically just skiving, you know. Just, skiving? Oh, uh, what's the word? Um, is that having a shufti? Uh, it's a bit like having Perving. a shufti. It's no... Um, no, <laughs> as, if, as if that would be the sort of... <laughs> you know me by now. Yeah, we used to go to the food court and perv. It was... <laughs> this is what we used to do in the afternoon. Nice baked potato. <laughs> check out a lovely arse. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, not, there's nothing that I find enhances the experience of perving than a nice baked potato. <laughs> if you're thinking of visiting a peep show, how surprised would the woman be if the <laughs> if the thing went up like that? I think that's the way they work. Like, <laughs> it was just a bloke eating a baked potato. Oh, no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> now then what's skiving um, skiving's just not really do it you know when you're supposed oh. to be at school or work okay. and then you just don't show up you hang oh, around so in you were wagging court. yeah wagging there that's right <laughs> um, we were wagging off and uh, <laughs> that sounded wrong didn't that it they, sound um, wrong. Don't scrub that forget it um, always crawled into the little gap between the monitor and the is that monitor alright by the way because I whacked that with yeah. such force well if it had been broken we wouldn't have been able to do this anymore <laughs> Some people can't decide whether it's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> um, so, because the, the other thing that used to happen at this food court as well was the um, the shopping centre involved used to get um, old people used to turn up on a Tuesday and a Thursday, mm. and they they had like a DJ, but he used to they'd have a tea dance, they'd clear all of <laughs> in the, the food court. yeah in the food court they'd clear all the tables back. And, like, pensioners from all over the area would come down and they would play the old music and they'd all have a bit of a... They'd all have a bit of a dance. But, of course, it was free... It was free admission. Yeah. I mean, obviously, they made the money in the tea, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, There's a lot of money to be made you know, in tea. Exactly. You just ask the Chinese. <laughs> um, and what would happen is... Monkey pick tea. Have you heard about this? Monkey pick tea? Yeah, really? Hang on, I'm just writing down tea dance so we know where to go back yeah. to. What's monkey pick tea? Ma you can buy this stuff now... <laughs> They've trained these monkeys, and I know this sounds like I'm making it up, but I'm really not. They've trained these monkeys to pick tea, you know, like off yeah, the... you know where it grows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah off the tea trees. Well, not out of people's hair. <laughs> yeah, or... exactly, yeah, like pickpockets. <laughs> like uh, the Artful Dodger, you know. <laughs> yeah, get out there and nick some tea. So the monkeys pick the tea. And the monkeys pick the tea, and then what happens is they, they gather it all up, and then obviously they charge a bit extra for that. And then when you buy the that... monkeys charge extra. Yeah, they do, yeah. They've got, like, little leather pouches, and they take your cash off you. Strangely, they haven't learned to hold money. <laughs> so they've made all this, and then they've dropped the cash. And they don't and have then, a union, so they're stuffed. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They've got to train little birds to pick the money up. Um, if it looked like tea, they'd be fine. They'd be able to but, but they pick the tea, and then they charge a bit extra for the tea because it's, you know, monkey pick tea. So it'll say, um, uh, have a label that says hand picked by monkeys. Hand picked by monkeys, um, <laughs> which all of my clothing has. Just on the hand yeah, picked, by, hand -picked monkeys. by monkeys. Yeah, I just have a monkey go, <laughs> and I go, oh, do you? Yeah. Um, that's how monkeys talk. The funny thing is, it's radio, and I still did the monkey, still did the, the, the monkey hands. Yes, um, weird. So basically, uh, they pick the and they charge a little bit extra for the tea, mm. and then uh, that money goes to st like monkey sanctuaries. Okay, I know this sounds like I'm making it up. So, <laughs> Where does this happen? you're giving that look of like people do this to me all the time. Does, just going, that's clearly just that's does this out happen of your in head. The food court? Uh, does this no, happen? no, this is it, this isn't related to the food court. This is a different thing. Um, but no, seriously, uh, email us in. There's uh, a monkey on the line. Ross and Terry dot com. It is a genuine thing. Um, monkey pick tea. I, I'm sure there's other, you know. Uh, rhino approved bread. I don't know stuff like that. You know, <laughs> hippo needed pizza. Um, hippo needed pizza. Good name for a van. Write it down. Write it down. The hippo. band quiz coming up sometime after twelve o'clock Hip, today. Hippo need pizza. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the old people making the money the, from the tea while the, they're dancing in the food court. Yeah, yeah. So the old people they would have a and <laughs> myself and my mates would go down there and uh, we would we would sit around and just watch the old people dance. No perving involved. You sure? But yes, some of very them are pretty hot. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They, uh, it's the way they move, you know. It's slow. It's as if to say, you could catch me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm here. I'm available, you know. 
Look at my hips gyrate. Well, they're not gyrating. I can't help it. They're false. They're artificial they're hips. They're not my hips. <laughs> they're not my hips. But These they're are imposter just, hips. I'm standing next to a heater, and quite frankly, they're melting, making it look like I'm making sexual gestures. Good name for a man, that sexual gesture. Oh, now then, yeah. right, I've written it down. The, um, <laughs> so we used to sit in this food court overlooking the Mayfair ballroom, and uh, what we'd do is we'd get Rory, because he was always up for it, he would go down uh, and I'd get a bit of chalk and he would lie on the floor. You see, go back to chalk outlines. Okay, here we go. And, and you can do this yourselves. Like, give this a try. If, you, if you're bored of an afternoon, you know, if you're in an office and there's a large area, you know, or if you're, or if you're at home and there's a lot of people walk uh, past the, uh, the outside of your house, um, he would lie down and I would do a chalk outline around him. And then, uh, you know, so it was good. And then we'd go upstairs in the food court and we'd sit down there just watching people walk past the chalk outline, <laughs> just freaking out like there'd been some... Would you make sure some... he was in a position that would obviously suggest he'd either jumped or... Oh, very you know, much so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, you know, sometimes holding his side, you know, <laughs> like he'd received an injury. But just, you know, you, ha- you just spread yourself out, chalk outline. If, you, if you're bored today and you're, uh, and you, you know, you're listening to the radio and you're also, you also have access to a, a pavement or sidewalk... If you're American, and because uh, we've established we've got listeners we in do Canada, have overseas listeners. Um, uh, if you're in London, of course, it's middle of the night. Uh, probably best not to go out and do that now, because there'll be no. real, real people being murdered. <laughs> um, but yeah, give that a try. And um, the, so water. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you remember? Yes, you were going to ask me a question. I was. Do you want yes. me to play a track and then you yeah, can yeah. ask me the question? Play a track and then I'll ask you a question uh, relating to a website thing. So, in the meantime, while the music's playing, get outside and fake a murder. Ross Noble and Terry Siakas with you on Triple J. <laughs> Write a song about that. One day I will leave your mic on. We've got two <laughs> days left and I'll just. Uh-huh. What I'll do is I'll just keep pressing it so it'll go on off and they won't yeah. get the whole thing that you're saying, but just enough to sue. Exactly. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Cover van. It off. <laughs> now then. <laughs> She's gone. Um, <laughs> welcome back to, to the show. She'll be back with us in a minute. <laughs> Don't go to press that jingle. <laughs> I was going to. <laughs> I saw, you, you know, know too did. much about the buttons now. It's the, been a week yeah, and a half. You yeah. can see what I'm doing. Keep the mystery alive. <laughs> now then, the the thing I was going to ask you about, <laughs> like I said, it seems redundant, but um, <laughs> we've had an email. Thanks for all the emails, by the way, because they, they really have been amazing. I, I, it's, it's, the, the website is uh, uh, rossandterry.com. Yes. Uh, there's, uh, that's Terry with an I. Don't... Correct. Don't ring up going, I can't get on, I can't get on. You'll end up getting like Terry and June from the 1970s. Did you have that? That Terry? sounds like a film. Terry and June. It was what? a sitcom. Oh, really? Yeah. T- t- Terry Scott, quite a large man, and June Whitfield. Ah, and June Whitfield from Absolutely Fabulous. That's right, yeah. And they played a, a husband and wife. Oh, and, nice. Uh, in a suburban setting. That sounds charming. Um, Rossandterry.com, uh, you can send us uh, an email, send us your message and all the rest of it. And we've had uh, we've had loads of... Um, uh, in fact, on the website, there's been quite a lot of um, uh, calls for uh, uh, more of the ladies from our Nana Watch section. More of the ladies. Oh, yes, yeah. Emma and Emma. You can... Uh, we, we have our, our cardboard cut out, Nana. But let's it's, not get into that no, just yet. Well, there's we'll. just, just two, two girls who have downloaded the Nana and taken photos of themselves with it. Now people are requesting more photos of those girls. Yeah. They seem to have got just their Just because own. they're, you know, yeah. quite tanned and, yeah. and lovely looking and, and are wearing, wearing bikini bikinis. tops. There's always the way. But just to set your mind at ease, I am wearing a bikini top as we speak. You are, and you have been, regardless of those photos. It's funny yeah. that those photos came. It's like did, they knew they'd you been in a yeah, bikini the whole the, time we've the, been broadcasting the whole time. together. Um, now Weird. then, uh, Fiona, right? She, um, yesterday at 4.16. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 4.16 on the knocker. Yes. Uh, what? On the knocker. Oh, on, sorry. On the buzzer. No, not on... Oh, yeah. we've gone terribly yeah. wrong. Well, considering... This is... Right. This is what she says, right? She said, actually, have you... Can you... Look, right, can you find four, find 416 yes. on there? Hello. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, go on. Hello. It's for you on oh, Have you got it? Since you two seem to know really random things, 
I dispute that. Could you help me out with this one? I bought a water-filled bra and I'm flying to Sydney soon, but I'm afraid to wear it on the aeroplane because with the pressure, I'm afraid it might explode. Do you consider this a legitimate danger? Greatly appreciated. I didn't know who else to turn to. Well, that's a bit tragic, Fiona. Uh... No, but you see, this is the sort of thing that, that, you know, that we can help. Like yesterday, we were chatting to a man who was trapped in a house. Yes, Jono from Bowral. And he only had several, you know, ingredients, mainly condiments. In the pantry. And with the aid of uh, a few callers, we helped him yeah. construct a meal. And this is the sort of dangerous... What, what do you All reckon? Right. What do you reckon a on that? A water-filled bra. A water-filled bra exploding. Under pressure. Well, look... I don't know about a water-filled bra, but if you take a bottle of water on the plane, that doesn't explode. No, but it does if... Because this has happened to me before where I've bought... Yeah, it has thing. that. Yeah, if you go on the flight, it, it starts to... <laughs> like, do you know what <laughs> Yeah, the plastic dents and it kind yeah. of... It's like it's... It's under pressure, so I don't know if they'd explain. Explain? I don't know if they'd explain. But they so might I go a bit Mish wonky. From, yeah, but essentially the... But real boobs don't go a bit wonky on the plane. Oh, it depends who you're with. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Rick, give us a call if your boobs have gone wonky. <laughs> um, yeah, real boobs. And from but... now on, everyone on the plane, get the girls out all the time. Just keep an eye on yourselves and on your friends. Uh, yeah, but surely the... It... The, you know, if it was the... the it's not going to explode. If, it's not going to explode, I don't think, but I'm thinking that the the boobs, like, working on the assumption that the bottle slowly twists and morphs into a different <laughs> shape, the, the boobs might start to... She might get more of a push-up effect as they yeah, <laughs> move yeah. upwards and inwards. That would be quite good if she was sat next to, say, a lonely businessman, and then slowly, <laughs> over the course of the flight, the boobs began to rise... <laughs> Rise and just... Geez, <laughs> did you see that bloke? Yes, I did. There was, there was quite a large man walked past the uh, walked past the window just as I was... Because obviously, as I'm talking... As you were fondling I, your own non-existent pushing, breasts. I was pushing my breasts up. I, was, I wonder what he thinks was going... Because you can't hear what's going on out there. No, you he can He probably only thinks see. this is some sort of uh, earnest ABC-style <laughs> show and going, well, speaking as a representative of man boobs... <laughs> I find that the best thing to do is always check your boobs. They always say that, don't they? Check, check your plums. <laughs> your plums? Check your plums for lumps. Now, you said plums last week and it meant something in the downstairs department, so yeah. I'm slightly confused. No, that's what I mean. No, I mean, I mean sort of, yeah, sorry, I moved off the breast. You've got to check, <laughs> ladies, check your breasts. Um, and fellas, check your plums, you know, um, for lumps and the like. I don't, you know, apparently... I, I, I check mine for, uh, for intruders. <laughs> Stowaways. Yes, exactly. You never know. You never know. You might have a. Do you know what worries me as a single what? girl? Apparently, a lot of a lot of breast lumps are detected not by the owner of the breast, but by the boyfriend of the owner of the breast, because you know they handle the breasts the most often, and they can pick up irregularities. The tiniest, and I'm slightly worried. The tiniest minute detail of change. Isn't in the that breast. an interesting thing? Apparently, that's a fact. Yeah. A lot of a lot of lumps are picked up by boyfriends rather than by the owners of yeah. the breasts. That's no, that is a good point, and that's why all single women should at least <laughs> once a week allow a complete stranger to fondle their breasts, you know? I mean, I'm a married man, not that it benefits me, but I'm saying, you know, if I put that out there, both men and women right now will be thanking me for that. Or doing something else. Uh, I, look, this Waterfield bra, I don't think it's going to explode. I think it may mutate, but I don't think it will explode. <laughs> You're right, actually. Mutation is the... Uh... Well, it's that weird kind of, you know kind of that yeah. it'll go a bit weird be a hell of an x-man uh, x-man that wouldn't it <laughs> what's your freaky mutation i'm storm i can create the weather what about you oh me wolverine blades come out of my they're not strictly blades they're uh, it's an adamantian skeleton before you ring in <laughs> but uh, just before you say it, it's always uh, blades come out i think you'll find it's an adamantian skeleton no um, what about you? Well, my breasts mutate <laughs> into slightly wonky shapes. I think, well, that would be an interesting thing. If Fiona's really serious about this, I think, you know, when you go through security and yeah. whatever else when you're at the airport now, yeah. 
there's a request or a question that those people wouldn't hear every day. They're very serious. The people yeah. who work at airport security just say, "Look, I've got I've got no guns. I've got no knives. I'm not carrying tweezers onto the plane, but I have got." Waterfield bra on, yeah. and what would you know? Do I need to take that off? I, you could be harbouring weapons in there. You could be. Is, I think that's the only reason they check you for sharp objects going onto the plane, for fear of <laughs> bursting a waterfield bra. We, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by these waterfield. Is it like a saline solution, or because uh, what would be ideal would be to have some sort of uh, some sort of tubing attached so it acted as a sort of you know the camel packs that you get for yeah. for when you go psych that'd be ideal for well it's the, it's the female equivalent of the beer can hat really exactly <laughs> the, the you know boobs with straws I how long you could survive with nothing there's an episode of macgyver right there somebody surviving <laughs> just on the yeah sucking on it well the, the water filled one bra. there's there's the water filled ones going around there's also oil filled ones no that i have uh, seen oil filled bra yeah and i don't know why oil like, oh. that just sounds, you know, anything like that, I think, if it was me wearing yeah. it, I would be guaranteed within the first five minutes of having it on, I would somehow puncture it. Yeah. You know, what's with the it, oil? That would burn for weeks. You'd have to get red adair in what, to put them out. What is it? If it was massage oil, I could understand, because there's a sexy game you can play with your partner. Exactly. Hang on, burst my bra and then I'll give you a massage. Quick release. Bit weird. You'd have to tell them what you were doing first. Otherwise, they'd <laughs> think you were yeah. just... <laughs> Stabbing yeah. yourself at random. Yeah, you have to be for no very, apparent reason. You have to be very careful. And then there's those weird chicken fillet things that oh, you can put in your bra. I'm very fond of those chicken fillet things. Well, They're I nice like, with satay sauce. <laughs> I do like a chicken <laughs> fillet. They, uh, yeah, they're they're often advertised on the um, they're often advertised on the telly, aren't they? they are. Those ones that sort of uh, that go over yes. the uh, the actual false boobs. You know the. Um, Artificial boobs, I should say, <laughs> other than false boobs. They, As um, opposed to the correct boobs. Yes. Um, they, they, I want, do they... I mean, there's always talk of them exploding on planes, isn't there? But... Uh, they well, must, there you go. That'd be more a more legitimate concern than a, a they, water filter. They must... They must alter shape, surely. There must be some sort There'll of... There'll be a plastic surgeon listening who will ring us in... Who will ring in and tell us. In, like, a set amount of... Give us a ring. Let us know if you're a plastic surgeon uh, about... Do the, do the, or if, uh, or if you've got fake boobs and they have mutated, <laughs> you know, and suddenly knives have popped out of them and yeah. slashed your way through a train. Oh, Wolverine boobs! <sighs> That'd be terrifying. It would be frightening, but it would be ideal for preparing veg. Hugh Jackman and boobs. Now you know, everyone's happy. Slice them carrots. <laughs> And Ross Noble and Terry Siakas with you talking tits. <laughs> that song <laughs> there, just before we move back onto the subject in hand, as it were, um, was uh, that song there, which make that booty shake like that. It's uh, in my head, I know it's meant to be like a sort of a sexy type song, yeah, but yeah. in my head, all oh, it's what? A party track. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're into that sort of party. Sure. Um, but, uh, you might in... be more into this sort of party. Nibbles, would you like nibbles? Nibbles, <laughs> that's the yeah, yeah. Um, that's our very special, our own little party there. Um, it just when he's made that booty shit in my head, I just imagine like you know, like a kind of a sideshow booth, like at a fair. Yeah. You know, like kind of uh, where you have to knock the ducks down, yes. knock a coconut off. Yeah, you know, make that booty shake like he's standing at the side of the booth. Make that booty shake, and there's just like a booty there, and then you've got a selection of different, just like a little stick. Maybe he's... Uh, Maybe you've got those balls that you have to throw at it yeah. and see if you hit on just, them. Yeah, just you've got to make a check. But it's a very it's a very firm booty, you know? Very, very firm, toned. So it's hard to do. Yeah, and you can try tickling it with a feather to see <laughs> if it will, you know, get the person laughing and then the shaking. Oh. And then that's detected uh, on a very, very sensitive uh, d- little device there. Just, just... <laughs> You've thought about this I way really too have. much. That's, you see, that's my problem, you know, when, when, hearing, uh, when hearing the trendy song. <laughs> now, uh, we were talking about... We, we had a query on our website from someone who wants to wear a water-filled push-up bra on a plane. They don't know if it's going to explode. We're talking about whether that would be possible. Jenny from Sydney gave us a ring and said that she act- has actual implants. Never been a problem on the plane, although she did one re- once read that uh, Linda Evangelista once had a rupture in her 
implant oh, on an okay. aeroplane, which was uh, apparently quite traumatic for her. For her. And we're also talking about oil-filled bras. And on that note, we have uh, Emma from Melbourne on the line. You had an oil-filled disaster. Yes, I did, what, actually. What happened? Well, I was going to a club and I thought I'd uh, pin something into the top of my bra that I didn't want the door security to come across. And right. um, during the evening, I kind of moved it around and pinned it in again. And I must have pinned it a little bit too firmly because the next thing I knew, over my entire front was oil, like oil slick down the whole front of my skirt and all down inside my top. And I had a rather uneven appearance <laughs> up top as well. So one, one side, side completely deflated. <laughs> And no one told you? Um, oh, I think um, I kind of became aware of it before other people and had to kind of go and mop up with the paper towel and all that sort of thing. Luckily, I was wearing vinyl, so, so I was able to kind of... It's not often I get to use that phrase, is it? <laughs> Luckily, I was wearing vinyl. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so the moral of that story is that all full brows are fine as long as you don't use safety pins in them. And, uh, and what, was the, what was the consistency of the oil? I mean, I take it you were like... It was like someone had literally like poured some olive oil down my front. It was very sort of smeary. Oh, like the Exxon Valdez. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have Good to... Good for lubrication. You, you didn't have to wash off a cormorant, did you? <laughs> that it got trapped in your cleavage. No, no. Uh, thank you for your call. No Emma. worries. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, that's that's nasty. Triple J, it's about twelve minutes past eleven. Ross Noble, Terry Siakis with you and that, we've that was can you hear to, the noise? That was meant to sound like me doing the sound of a dying flight sound more like a monkey. We have uh Oh nice tea. Tom from Western Victoria on the line. Are you there, Tom? Yep. Now uh we've just on the spot invented a segment. We spoke to a gentleman on a tractor yesterday. You've yep. rung up, you're on a tractor. Tell us about your tractor. Let's talk to people on tractors. Um, it's actually a header. Um, it's, it's a header? It's, yeah, it's a bit similar to a tractor, but um, it's, I'm harvesting uh, wheat at the moment. Harvesting wheat. And what, what sort of header? Give us, give us, you know, model numbers and what's it called <laughs> and what's the horsepower and stuff. Um, it's the Case 2388. Oh, I it's love that. pretty big one. But, um, what colour? Red. Has it got a spoiler? No, no, it hasn't got a spoiler. Um, everything but... Does it no, have... No, what, what, what features does it have? Um, it's got a big 36-foot front on it. Oh. That means anything. No, nah, but I like the sound of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and what is the squeaky noise? Um, sorry? And what, what is that squeaky noise that... Um, it's, yeah, it's alarms going off telling me, telling me different things. Like what? Uh, oh, well, when... When your header gets full with too much grain, and you're probably going too quick through the crop, it tells you to slow down. So. Are you speeding, Tom? Uh, a little bit. Wipe yeah. off five, mate. So you're essentially you're calling us, but yet at the same time operating a <laughs> heavy huge machinery. heavy machinery. Yep. Yeah, Mag- should be concentrating on other stuff, but Mag- I'm talking to you guys. Magnificent. It's like the start of one of those kind of uh, medical shows. <laughs> you know, when there's just the guy's on the phone, he's chatting away, there's people, you know, nearby having a picnic, cutting yeah. between the two. It's all going to end badly. Have you, ever, yeah. have you ever parallel parked your header, Tom? Um, yeah, probably better, actually. Yeah? Yeah, no, there's a few tight spots you have to get in between. <laughs> That's all right. And do you have air conditioning? Air conditioning, yeah, must. You must. do have air conditioning? Yeah, it's bloody hot otherwise because the, the cab's all made of glass. Okay. So you can imagine it heats up pretty quickly. And you don't have fluffy dice hanging? Do you have a rear view mirror? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, you've got mirrors everywhere, but no fluffy dice, unfortunately. Nice. I should, um, I should get around to putting something up, actually. You should. You should, you should download a nana from uh, rossandterry.com, reduce yeah. it, and hang her from the rearview mirror. Just a little mini nan. Just a little mini nan. Yeah, well, I'm actually a bit scared about the nana printout thing. I'm not sure, like, how big does it come out once you print it? Life size. Well, you, you have all... It uh, works out to about 20 yeah, it's, A4 it's, sheets yeah, that you then assemble. And it, but it is. It's life size. I mean, don't don't be scared. It's not going to come out any bigger than that. You wouldn't be like... It's not going to be like in um, Fantasia nana. where there's just, like, sheets of nanas flying out and you have to stuff them back into the printer. Um, yeah. It's, it, it's, 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 it's life size. If, yeah, if I start pressing the, the print button, I'm probably going to have to leave the computer for a day to wait for it to print out. 
Well, what you could do is get, rather than get a nana and reduce her and waste all that paper, why don't you print out your life-size nana and you can pop her on the seat next to you in the header? Yeah, yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. But um, how do you send photos in? Uh, uh, you go to uh, you go to Ross and Terry dot com. Yeah, and I then, checked it out yesterday. Actually, yeah, and then you click on to um, uh, you can either go to I think it's either on the Nana Watch section or yes. or on the DI. Is that where it is? Is yeah, it? Yeah, it's on, on the Nana Watch. Nana section. Watch. You just go down to the bottom of the pictures. We'll we'll go through the pictures that have been sent in in a, yes. in a minute. Um, and uh, you go down to the bottom, and then there's a, and then you basically just send it to the link on there, and uh, it appears as many, many people have done. Uh, and I think it's about time we had a picture of an, of Nana with uh, heavy machinery. W- with heavy machinery, <laughs> we've had all just right. uh, all sorts of stuff. But don't be scared. It's like I say, it's, it's about it's about twenty pages, and uh, sell <laughs> them together or glue them together, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's a, it's a it's a fun project for the kids, if nothing it's, it's else. It's quite it's quite easy. My housemate downloaded Nana last night, and it only took him an hour. So there you go. <laughs> like, like, like an hour from pressing print through to actually having to the having Nana, the Nana having the stuck Nana. on the bathroom door. You know. Yes. Okay, I'll make sure I have Nana on the tractor by uh, by tomorrow. All righty, Tom. You take care. No worries. Can you can you rev the engine or, or honk the horn or something? Is there a horn? Oh, on the it? engine's flat out. Um, I can honk the horn. I don't think you'll hear it. Uh, it's... Can you... Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's no, working it's good. for me, Tom. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thanks for your call, mate. <laughs> No worries. See yeah. you Right now, field mice have scattered all <laughs> over the place. Well, um, uh, Tom brought us nicely to the topic of Nana. This was very uh, professionally done. And the photos were well, more professionally than we could have done it. And I also think as well it's worth pointing out the fact that it's very, you know, obviously the phones, uh, we're answering the phones ourselves here. Well, rather, Terry's answering the phones because I'm rubbish <laughs> at it. And uh, <laughs> But basically, you know, there's, we talk about a myriad of things. You can ring in about anything. But yeah. the important thing is, if you are on a tractor, you jump the queue. You're straight on air. No <laughs> questions asked. That's essentially the way it works. You don't even have to have anything that you'd particularly like to talk about. Exactly. You can just ring up and say, I'm on a tractor. tractor. If you can prove it, you're on. Yeah. Now, or a thresher. Uh, the, uh, Nano, Nano watch. watch. Nano Watch. Nano Watch. Nano Watch. Nano Watch is See, out of control. I just did a little bit of music a there theme. to you know, get everyone excited about... For those of you who don't know the yes. story so far, <laughs> many years ago in a place far off, there was a nana. There was a nana uh, which was stolen, a uh, cardboard nana, a uh, two-dimensional cardboard nana, was stolen from outside of a walking frame shop. That nana was brought down to the Triple J Studios where it was given by Ben of Melbourne yes. to both Terry. We took that nana on board and she became part of our radio family. She's in the studio with us at the moment. Standing right there, the Queen Nana, as she has now become. Unfortunately, (laughs) the people of Australia didn't have nanas of their own, or certainly not one that looked like this. So, (laughs) on rossandterry.com, there is a DIY print out your own nana. It's an exact replica down to the minutest yes. of details and it comes, you just press print and A4 pages will come out of your printer. Yep. You glue or sellotape the nanas together. The simple instructions. F- easily done with flaps and tabs. Yes. And uh, the nana will be built before your very eyes. I mean, you have to use your hands, but the nana will appear before your very eyes and then you too have an exact replica of the Nana that we have in the studio. What adventures has <laughs> Nana been getting up to? Yesterday, uh, she um, she she sent us a picture yesterday from. Let's let's just recap yesterday's okay. photos. What so, were our uh, favourites from yesterday? Uh, oh, now there's another page. There's so many now that we've got two pages. <laughs> yesterday's Nana. We didn't get were, to do um, that yesterday. Uh, she was de- a delivery truck driver in Melbourne. She, she was wearing a toque in Canada. Yeah, all the, the way snow. from Canada. She's a travelling. Um, She's at a pub with a bunch of blokes who really don't look like they listen to Triple J in Newcastle. (laughs) (laughs) She's having a lovely Guinness. She's having a pint. She's having a smoke. She's having a smoke. She's She's being almost fondled by an elderly gentleman on Diamond Beach. Emma and Emma, who are two lovely young ladies in bikinis uh, who have got their own fan club now. They're uh, treating Nana to hot wedges. Mm, Hello. Food. Oh, thank God. As opposed to the punishment. The, she's uh, uh, hanging out with some underage drinkers. Who, one of which is a girl, we should point out. Yes. She's got her head down. We said it was boys yesterday. It is a girl. She's playing bingo. There she is. She's having a cup of tea. With the Smith family. Mowing she, the lawn. She's enjoying a nice meal. 
She's uh, cooking a meal in it. She's actually in a. She's wearing a, a beret and a a, a penny, and um, she's uh, she's enjoying she's a, cooking. A, cooking a dinner. Uh, she's being sung to by Dave's dad from Eight Mile Plains. Uh, she's got a bird on her head, and she's working where? Uh, where was that? That was from the Animal Network Association in Wollumla. That's where she works. <laughs> she works then. She's a busy now. She's a volunteer at the Animal Network yeah. Association. She's voting in the hottest 100 she's in front play- of the computer. She's playing cards. She's mm. having a bit of a lie-in with a gentleman mm. she's in with a, a bed under she's a doona. She's got a polar bear and two race car drivers next to her. Yes. And there she is in the studio uh, with Terry and myself. Exactly. And today when we logged on, oh. wow. Well, you Jeez. have... G- Australia, you've outdone yourselves. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you... <laughs> yeah, Nana... you've disturbed me severely. <laughs> <laughs> because we said yesterday, come on, Nana's been doing regular things. Let's see Let's see what she... <laughs> just yeah. exactly what Let's Nana's... Let's take Nana out of her comfort zone. And yeah. Maya, you certainly have. Steve has uh, taken a photo of himself with Nana in uh, Willagee, or Willagee, I think. Um, they're looking for weapons. They're both wearing hard hats and they're standing next to a large bomb in a warehouse. (laughs) Essentially, here is a man who guards... I don't know if you should have put the place in. He clearly guards this nation's (laughs) weaponry, large missiles. It is huge. It's it's a proper... That is like a... What's that, like a torpedo or something, like a... Is is it not like one of those daisy cutter type things? It might be a... it might just be a large gas tank and we're fools, but... No, it says explosive, look. Oh, no, it probably Warning, is. Warning, explosive. explosive. So, essentially, here's a man who's guarding missiles. He's a bit bored of an afternoon. He's taken his own hard hat off. He's only put it on Nana. <laughs> and so, Nana's managed to infiltrate an underground secret bunker. <laughs> Good work, Nana. Then they've got her driving a uh, forklift. And what I like about some of these photos is every now and then people add things to the Nana, like a hat or an extra bit of yeah. necklace, or she's wearing the correct safety gear <laughs> while she drives this forklift. <laughs> she is as well. She's got the little jacket on. <laughs> this one's one of my favourites from um, WA. Someone has sent us in Uncle Chop Chop Nana, <laughs> and they've put sunglasses, a chopper reed moustache... And from behind Nana, they're just doing that pose with the arms crossed. And, you know, they might be real guns. I think they are. I think they are real guns, which I hope you have a licence for whoever (laughs) sent those in. If you don't... She's playing the drums, though. I don't know, yeah. She's playing the drums on Joe's kit from Toowoomba. She's... uh... (laughs) There's a a couple of fellas and this... uh, I mean, they've certainly skimped on their outfits. Um, They're wearing very skimpy leather outfits with studs on them. Yeah. There you go, she's uh, indulging. Colin in and Tim from uh, some sort Adelaide. Of le- leather waistcoat. Looking good in leather with Nana, who looks surprisingly comfortable. Now, <laughs> this one. I think this is my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is radio and you can't see. We're going to try and describe it for you. You can see it for yourself, rossandterry.com. Go to the Nana Watch page. This... This tells you something, I think, about the kind of people who listen to our show, Ross. It's called... <laughs> Nana takes a hostage. I've gone. You've gone. It's your turn to go. <laughs> Nana takes a hostage at her secret hideout. Now, Nana is holding a long-arm rifle and she's standing over someone who appears to be bound and gagged with their head bowed and uh, she's smiling... And looking chirpy as always, as Nana always does. But Got she... a Nana more beer, that's where she <laughs> is. <laughs> Write that down. That's a band. That's a band. Oh, Jesus. I, again, I hope we've oh, no, said no, this no, in. No, what? This is just, this is so wrong. I hope you've got a licence for that firearm. This, now, this is wrong. <laughs> This is wrong. There are three pictures from an intensive care unit in a hospital which, thank God, it will remain nameless because otherwise... Get, there's the fly. Look. <laughs> What's off. funny about the fly is that while we were off air, while the news was on, uh, Amy, who does the show, just just twat it. No, I can't. Just It'll squash. Oh, he's, di- he's dying. Whack the mouse on his head. He's dying. Look. He's upside down and he's going yeah, all that, weird. Go on, whack it. No, no, no go on. <laughs> what was good is the page moves Ooh, like. Yuck, now what do I do with it? Just, oh. it's just, just leave it there. I'll clear the area it's in a the, second. On the floor. Um, while, we right. were, while the news was on, Amy, who does the show, just before us, walked in and just went, 
did did you did you kill Barry? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like she's everybody sort of, knows him. The, the thing is, we've got you know we've, we've got, called him Louis. We, we talk to each other, you know. Yeah. We talk to everyone else. It's one big happy family. I've got a feeling that Amy uh, is a bit like um, Tom Hanks in Castaway. <laughs> It's just her and Barry. Because she's in here by herself. She's in here by herself. What do you she reckon, Baz? Shall I play the new one from Mogwai? Yeah, why not? Um, uh, so these people are in an intensive care unit. And these people are doctors. They're proper doctors. Oh, they're, they're doctors oh, or surgeons? No, they must be porters, surely, or cleaners. No, nah, that guy's in a suit under that gown. He's a doctor. Now, there are three photos here. One of them, they've, they've got X-ray images of Nana... Yeah, just having a look at it. That's you know, that's all right. You can take that photo in two seconds. Uh, is that genuine? Have they actually X-rayed her? No. Well, does she, does she have a skeleton? That's a skeleton. Is it cardboard? I can't really see from here. Yeah. She uh, another one. She appears to be delivering a baby that is being <laughs> by a man pushed out by a man. That's a nice photo. The one that gets me though. <laughs> it's oh. titled. Nana takes charge of the defibrillator. And if you download your Nana, you'll see that her hands are positioned in such a way that she could be holding a defibrillator. She's standing over a patient in the intensive care unit. He has he breathing like apparatus he's, he's down his throat. He's in a coma. He's attached to wires and machines and someone has thought, hang on, here's a photo opportunity, get Nana in with a defibrillator. That's wrong. It's very funny, but it's wrong. And this is an interesting one, taking Nana back to her childhood in many ways. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what's the name of that fella there? Uh, the guy who's holding our first ever black and white Nana. Yeah, she is. Uh, Chris. Chris, From there. Sydney's Northern Beaches. He's obviously run out of um, coloured ink. Um, yeah. because he's uh, he's got a black and white... Uh, black and white now. Uh, maybe he's, uh, she could do a few Al Jolson numbers. <laughs> and from Ocean Grove in Victoria, a lovely one. Little three three kids, Alex Griffin and Jamie, taking Nana to the seaside and burying her in the sand. Burying her in the sand. <laughs> so, is is uh, that all of that, that? Have we missed some on the very bottom of this page as well? No, I that's think, it. Is it? I thought there was that's one it. more after that. Oh, there was Nana on the bog. There she is, yeah. She's on the toilet. Yes. That's classic. And another one, which we Kelly. won't mention on the radio, because there's probably children <laughs> listening. No, we'll leave you to look at yeah, that one. Yeah, you can have yourself. a look at that one yourself. So yeah. there you go, Ross com. Go to the uh, Nana Watch page, which I think, you know, it's our second and final week. We've got our last show on Friday. There is no doubt in my mind that Nana Watch... It's going to continue. It's going to continue. Uh, it's going to become a global phenomenon. And in fact, how exciting is this as a bit of news? We got an email from a guy called Gog who um, emailed us at, uh, at 2.48 yesterday. <laughs> Love and, the detail. Uh, oh, yes. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of people have been uh, ringing in an email and saying, who is the Nana? Let's find the Nana. Where is the Nana? And you write, rightly so. The when, real Nana. The real Nana. The yeah, the actual first Nana. photo. Yeah. Um, what's great is whenever they ring in, I can just hear you saying, uh, we well, think Nana might be dead. <laughs> <laughs> we don't... We don't know. This is but actually really someone's nana, but we don't. But, we don't know. But Gog uh, rang, uh, emailed in, and said that um, uh, he's, he's from Brisbane, and he was an assistant. He was a photographic assistant on the photo shoot of Nana, of the first Nana, the of, Queen of Nana, the, of the actual that Nana there, that position. Gog probably put her in that position. And in his email, he says that the photographer was trying to get Nana to just jump in the air. <laughs> Nana wasn't up for it. You don't ask a Nana no, to jump I mean, in the air. There's some things you ask a Nana to do. And, so, and what, like, who's going to see a Nana leaping in the air at a walking <laughs> film shop and think, you know what, I'll do that. You know, fair enough, I might have uh, crippling arthritis and require a walking film, but sure, I can leap. Well, if Gog can uh, ring us and prove his identity, it'd be nice to talk to him on the phone, one eight hundred oh triple five three six. And we also would like to know why she has odd shoes. Yes, why does she have odd shoes? <laughs> They're not real shoes. So if you know the identity of the Nana or if you are Gog, give us a ring in and uh, and also... Please don't sue us. And please, please, please download a Nana and take a photo, send it in, because, you know, the adventures of Nana must continue. Right, that's Nana done. Ross Noble, Terry Siakas with you at uh, about 20 minutes to 12 o'clock. Did I say... I thought I said it was 12 o'clock before. Did I stuff up? I did. Uh, did you? Coming out of the news, well, I, I said think, it's 12 past noon, enough, I think. It? I'm way ahead of myself. The, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know what I you think don't you pay attention to anything I, I say. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> the times are relevant to me.
You know, you um, don't care. I don't care about the time. Uh, you care yeah. about the language warnings. You're getting very, <laughs> I just, very. I just think it's funny Pissed if you're going to say like, I, I, you know, I, I do think it is good the fact that you can just say any words that you want. Like the fact that we're not allowed to say those words. We can say them in context. I think if you're quoting someone, you can say them, but you should probably warn people that you're going to yeah say something. But you can a bit play. Fruity. You can yeah. You can play it in the song. Yeah. And it's just... And they're not mucking yeah. around in some of those songs. I know. Really <laughs> quite using full it. On. That's just great. It's quite funny. You what? Go, oh. Yeah. Sing yeah. it louder. Yeah. How good would it be if your kids were regular Triple J listeners and, you know, kids pick up the songs that they listen to in the car and whatever. If you had just a back seat full of kids just going, what the... You see Do that? I care? I what? did that That'd be great. recently uh, with... Uh, I was uh, showing my brother-in-law a video, uh, a DVD... Um, of porn. No. Um, no, no, I was showing my brother-in-law this... We already this, talked about tits in the first hour. So, we don't, don't need don't, to carry it through into the second. Uh, it's, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's fine for you to say things that are slightly dodge, <laughs> and then as soon as I say it, it's like, oh, blokiness. <laughs> the, uh, you, are you suggesting that it's not all right for you to say anything slightly dodge? What? Have a think for four years. <laughs> Have <laughs> a think. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Um, yes, I was showing your brother in the I was showing my brother in this DVD um, of, of this comic I'm a big fan of, and one of his punchlines is just the word bollocks said about five times <laughs> repeatedly. And uh, my uh, my niece uh, was in the room at the time. <laughs> I forget how old she is, but she's only little. But she repeated it, and I went, oh, no. <laughs> just repeat. <laughs> Did she know what it meant? I don't think so. But she was pointing at me, enchanting it repeatedly <laughs> in my face. Maybe she didn't know what it meant. Uh, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> teach her orange. Yeah. See, you can teach kids stuff and they don't know it's not a real word. So they just, you know, yeah. use it and throw it into sentences that's, and just that's, that's how you get it out there. The teach great, it to kids. That's the great thing about kids, isn't it? They just you can just manipulate them you can. for your own evil ends. You so can. That's you can why just, people have them. Yeah, just send them to school, just full of information that's just not true. <laughs> just tell them things. You know. Um, you could tell them that uh, John from southern New South Wales, Bridget of Victoria and Frank from northern New South Wales and Aaron from Moree in New South Wales are all driving tractors. Yeah, we've had a big influx of tractor drivers. <laughs> all of a sudden, phones went mad. I'm on a tractor, I'm on a tractor, oh, yeah, I'm on a tractor too. <laughs> lot of There was a selection of people. Oh, I've got air con, I'm listening yeah. to you guys. It's all, it's it's all, all happening. Go, it's all going the tractor world. I think what we should do is every day we should uh, we should appeal to a different, you know, today it's people on tractors, tomorrow, who knows? Ah. People who what work a pity, in, it's the second and final week of the show. It really is. <laughs> it really is a shame. People who work in kiosks, you know? That's a great word, kiosk. Oh, I love a kiosk. It's right, right. up there with trousers. Yeah. It's a great I'll word. I'll give you that. Uh, now, we have been looking at our website, which is, we, we would, you know, you might think that we have lots of money around here at Triple J and we can pay someone to do a website. No. Matt from Perth just rang up and said, I've done a website for you, and he's done a bang-up job. Matt from Perth is a genius. He is a genius. Not only is he posting your uh, your Nana photos, but he has... <laughs> he just rings in and he'll say, I've done this, it's on now, if you want to yeah, check it out. And it's, oh, it's right, just happened. Do. And this really, he's, he's outdone himself, really. He's, uh, well, if you, if you want a bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> it's, very, it's very similar to commercial radio that have the, uh, that have the bumper stickers. Yeah, but we're not really flogging anything. No. It's, we're just doing it for the, the hell just of it, really. Just for the laugh, yeah. Uh, bumper stickers. Now, please note that bumper and stickiness not included on these stickers. You might want to print them print them print onto something sticky or buy some paste. Uh, nana loves you. Who's your Nana? That's Borange and my other car is Borange. Coming to a Ross and Terry dot com near you. Thank you. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> you know, every day he loved this. Yes, he has. It's, oh, look, it's out of control. It's 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 a proper it's a proper thing. Oh, and so also as well, there's a there's a link on there, you can, which is to my website, uh, which oh, is uh, either rossnoble.com or rossnoble.co.uk. 
and that uh, for the fellow rang up before wanting to know where my DVD was available. It'll be available <laughs> in the shops. Hello, John Laws. In uh, hi, um, <laughs> it'll be available in the shops in February. But uh, it's available uh, on the the merchandising section on, and also all the tour dates as well. Because I keep forgetting to mention that I'm doing oh, yes. a big tour right round Australia, and um, it's just uh, you know up there across that way down a bit, right the way around. Tickets are on sale now. And also a Melbourne Comedy Festival. And all the details are on are on the website. I might bring in the details maybe by the end of the week. Maybe if, that would be handy. If I remember. You maybe, know. Uh, I think it'll be, it'll be fairly easy to tell uh, if, you know, if you're sort of wandering around your town thinking, is Ross Noble doing a show here tonight? If there's a fairly large venue that has a lot of tractors in the car park. Yeah. It is highly likely. Yeah, that, and quite um, a lot of two-dimensional old ladies as well. But uh, when you're going to get that, when you're going to get a lot of that <laughs> everywhere you go from now on. For everywhere the rest you of your go, life, you're, you're doing a get show at the festival. When yes. is it? The know. comedy festival uh, starts at the end of March, I think, yeah. in Melbourne. Is it end of um, March all the way through April? End of March all the way Terry's through. Terry's doing April. a show. I'm doing a show as well. Tickets are on sale now. Nana's. Nana's Ahoy in the audience. Nana's Ahoy, there's the name of the show. Uh, my, show is already, Ahoy. My, my show's already got a title. It's called Noodle Meister. That's bit, good. We, we made it in, a week and a half and we'd never mentioned anything self-serving. And yeah, <laughs> I know, but, you know, in many ways, this is the second and final week of the show and, quite frankly, you know, I've got a big tour to do. I've got to start <laughs> telling people about it. You do. And uh, Terry will be performing Nana's Ahoy uh, <laughs> for the whole of the... What is your show called? I'm not quite sure yet. Okay, <laughs> I well. Think it, uh, there are a number of theories, but I don't think anything's been cast in stone. For the whole, imagine that if we were on at the same time and we were only doing one night. Oh, what a nightmare scenario that would that be. That would be Luckily, a we're both on for a full month. <laughs> but don't feel left out if you're in the rest of the country. No. Because I'm doing a big tour. It's on now, the website. Uh, Have a look. We've got... Uh, and the DVD is available. Did I mention that? <laughs> Yes, you yeah. mentioned yeah, that. Move on now. <laughs> I'll bring uh, in the details for you, especially right. by we, by Friday. I'll have, bring them. In, I'll read them all out. You're doing this on purpose, aren't I you? am. I really I am. Can tell you are. <laughs> it was for a minute there. You thought I was doing it accidentally. I was You're trying going, to cope. Hang on a second. And it's like what? Let's not do it anymore. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's stop it now. What would be great is if I read out my tour dates and just without music. Yeah. Go on and play it like that. You just pretend. Yeah. I'll be appearing at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. I'll also be in Sydney at the Enmore Theatre. I'll do that. I'll do that by Friday, <laughs> and people will be going. I just I want to go and see a show purely to stop that music. <laughs> It's clever, subliminal. I, I do apologise. What what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that our band quiz is coming up as soon as you write it. Hint, <laughs> hint, hint. In oh, the yeah, meantime, uh, hello to John from the Western District in Victoria, Rodney from Gippsland, and Liam from Shepparton in Victoria. All on tractors. Brilliant, brilliant. And also as well, uh, we we want to hear from. We've just decided if you're spruiking, right? Yes. Give us a ring if you're spruiking uh, right now. If you've got a mic in your hand and access to. Uh, loud healing equipment, um, you know, or you've uh, got some sort of tannoy system, give us a ring. Yep, one eight hundred o triple five three six. If you are spruiking, brokers, those people who stand out the front of a shop or an event with a bit of a microphone, bit of an amp, and yell stuff at you as you're walking past. And we have had a call from KJ yeah, from yeah, Q yeah. in Victoria. How are you? Hello there, all fellow Jayers. <laughs> Can't half tell you're a spruker, can you, KJ? Not in. <laughs> no, but you're a spruker with a difference because you're a spruker on your day off today. I am indeed. Just right. Messing up here a lovely 40,000 or 50,000 piece jigsaw, which is parquetry, and the boys here are putting it back together as we speak. And he's spruking them while they're doing it? Just encouraging them along here in the lovely leafy suburb that is Q. <laughs> and as we make our way now into the kitchen, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you do check out the fact that you couldn't make the drawers for what we don't have them for here today. So anything for the cutlery or cooking implements would be greatly appreciated. And please, on your way out, make sure you attach the door handles and fix or replace the fan because the toilet system is still leaking water and continuously making noise. As we make our way into the main bedroom, please secure or glue all loose parquetry and fill the gaps in the floor. And don't forget that you don't need your passport. It is cheaper than duty-free here, ladies and gentlemen, in queue. So we will stamp it for you on your way. So and the lovely grandma there just making her way down. There's a grandma. Oh, she's too stiff. Hang on. And Nana. Nana. 
she so you, you've got you've got the equipment and you're spruiking at, as as we speak. I'm entertaining myself, yes. And is there construction or something going on in your house? Is that right? Yeah, parts yeah, flooring. Ah, yeah. that's it. It's yeah. turned into a massive jigsaw. Your father-in-law? Yeah, <laughs> is my yes. father-in-law there by any chance? Uh, he's a little busy at the moment. But <laughs> he said it's something to do with four years ago. He, he won't put it behind him. Oh, okay. Oh. No idea what that means. <laughs> I don't know. It's between you and him, right? <laughs> do you really have Ross's father-in-law at your house? Um. No comment. <laughs> Do you? No. Where about? I'm in the club box. He's what? in. He's in queue. He's in queue. In Victoria. No. In Melbourne. This is a bit freaky. Hello, Ross. Hello. I think he's pulling your leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think KJ, the fact that, the fact that you're, you're a spruker, not a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> no, your role, mate. This, that was quite. <laughs> that was quite good. The fact that you went. Mm, I wonder what his father was. Hello, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> was he work at the Quickie Mart all of a sudden? The, uh, no, but that was very good. Um, and where do you normally spruik? Uh, wherever will pay me, generally, in Melbourne or Perth. So you're actually like a freelance, so you're not affiliated to one particular store. You're just kind of... You're like a wandering minstrel. A wildflower. Good Lord. And where will you be spruiking tomorrow? Um, home, again. <laughs> oh, is it a bit of a lull at the moment? No, no, no. I'll be out in Forest Hill in the next couple of days. All right, OK. What, Forest Hill Shopping Centre? Yes. All right. And what sort of stores would you be spruiking for there? Um, everything. Um, anything pretty much in the shopping centre that they've got and whoever would like to be spruiked at the time. Oh, I'll right, OK. Of the day. All right, brilliant. I've, I've, so I've if often said I'd like to be spruiked. hello to everyone there out in Forest Hill too. What do you do to become a spruiker, KJ? Talk to yourself in the mirror while it's raining as a kid. <laughs> I, we, I think Ross may have done this. Time. I was in Ireland, so it was yeah, just as depressing with the rain in Ireland. So I'm sure Ross can relate to that. You, you just you talk see, and talk. You see, like uh, like Spruken's a very Australian thing. Like I don't think Ireland. It's not the sort of because uh, Ireland would be far too laid back. It'd be like. <laughs> Oh, right there, there's a load of items on sale, but to be quite honest with you, you wouldn't be needing any of them. I tell you what, you should go and have yourself a nice cup of tea and sit yourself down. Don't be going out there buying all those. <laughs> all those They're items all out that the front you don't of the need. Off-license. Yeah. <laughs> Not stereotyping an entire nation. So Not did, at you, all. did you have a did you have something, Ross, that you wanted KJ to do next time he spruced? Yes. Um when you're in Forest Hill Shopping Centre <laughs> on uh, was it Friday? Yes. Well obviously that's the, our final day of the show, Friday. So would it be possible just to slip in a kind of uh, just a, a mention of Nana? Could you just at some point just say and download a Nana at rossandterry.com? I may even have Nana with me. Oh, <laughs> now you're talking. Could See. you could you download Nana? Have the Nana just <laughs> just while you're spruiking at Forest Hill Shop set because I've got a feeling there would be a huge, huge amount of people who maybe he's listening to us in the car yeah. and think I'll just nip into the shops. Oh, and your stepdad, yes. Say okay. that again. Your father in law, stepdad, sorry. Father, what? I think no, we're operating on two he's, very different levels he, here. He's not coming. <laughs> um, what I'm saying is, could you have the Nana with you? And then people, what? because people could then, who maybe don't have internet access, yep. could actually meet the Nana down yes. at Forest Hill Shopping Centre. And then, like and then we'll get people to call us up if they've seen you with the Nana. That sounds like a plan. All righty, well, let us Marvelous. know if you do that, KJ. I'll give you a call when the plan comes together. <laughs> OK, well, have fun with your parquetry. I will. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Thanks to the boys. See you. See you later. So, there you go, your chance to... Now that will be See, me. I like this, because we did have a call from Chris earlier on, I can't remember where he was from, who said that uh, he his mum works in a library and they were downloading Nana to have her on display to indicate the big print section. <laughs> so I like this idea of Nana kind of being incorporated into people's jobs and, you know, yeah. just being a bit of an added extra yeah, in the workplace. Go down and meet Nana. Um, mm. and, and I like the fact that there'd be, you know, if people who do want to meet her, you know, rather than just looking on the internet... I like the idea that a huge amount of people go down there and just essentially... Uh, re We're still looking for Gog. Gog hasn't rung in, but uh, Gog, uh, you, you sent us an email. You were an assistant on the photo shoot, Anna. We really desperately want to uh, speak to you because we might be... Able, well, that To get a photograph with the actual Nana, that would be... 
that would be something. That'd be tops. Or just get the clothes that she's wearing, you know, because she's no longer around. No, no, I never said that. And did, did I say it's, that? You said it. It's don't somebody's, look at me like... It is somebody's name. I know it's somebody's name. She might not have kids. You don't know. Yeah, actually, she's yeah. got a wedding ring on in that... She has got a wedding ring on, you know, but she might have uh, she might have devoted it herself to modelling. Yeah, and, it does, um, <laughs> doesn't yeah. mean she did have kids, though, does it? Yeah. She looks like... Oh, she, she's, she looks she, like... She, we're all her children, even if she didn't. <laughs> and that's important. But, Gog, please give us a ring or email us and let us know where you are and what the score is, because we desperately want to know what that photo shoot was like and how you got Nana into the position that she's in. So to speak. Now, we do have the band quiz coming up for the first time ever in our first, our second and final week of the show. We had someone ring up and shotgun the band quiz. Dave from Melbourne rang up and said, I'm shotgunning the band quiz, so we will have the band quiz with Dave from Melbourne, who's shotgunned it. On Triple J, where it is uh, around about 27 minutes past... There's no crows here. 12 o'clock. <laughs> There's no crows here. Kings of Leon's uh, catchphrase, as we established yesterday. Oh, that's right. There'll be no crows. To... <laughs> and what would happen, right? Bearing in mind that the uh, Kings of Leon do look all like scarecrows. Yes. What happens if they were doing a gig with the Counting Crows? Oh, that'd, that'd be, be a disaster. Because yeah, people are coming along expecting Counting Crows. Confusion. And, yeah. It'd be awful. Yeah. Is it the Counting? It's just Counting Crows, isn't counting it? Crows, yes. Counting Crows, yes. I like to do that. I like to put the in front of, in front of, in front of bands. My all-time you know? favourite album, August and Everything After. Not that impressed by what they did after that, but yeah. Counting Crows, good Count- first album. Nice work. Yeah, go on. <laughs> There's a tip for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't don't buy me that as a gift, people, because clearly, I know, you're thinking, what can I get her? Don't get me that, I've already got it. Yeah. Could we also just say for a minute, uh, and I know we'll deal with the boring songs at a little yes. later stage, just on the subject of people getting you gifts and receiving phone calls. If you are going to send in a boring song, probably, oh, best, shit, yeah. <laughs> probably best not to use it uh. as a means of essentially stalking Terry. Because I just, I, I don't think I've ever met anyone that's encouraged <laughs> quite such... I, I seriously, I get freaks. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But... I've strangely I'm a freak that. magnet. Yeah. Could you just, if you're just a normal bloke, <laughs> if you're just a normal, like a professional man... Or even just... Not like, a, I don't mean like you're a, I'm a professional man. <laughs> I mean like you're a professional... <laughs> Uh, we're we're not know. not that we're you know necessarily trying to uh, set me up with anyone on this program. Even just there's been some weird people calling as well who are not yeah. blokes. Yeah, there's been a Lady lot of offers. weirdness. Yeah, and I'd like it to stop. <laughs> yeah, essentially, you know, just approach me in a supermarket. I don't think I'm being rude. I don't know, think you know. Or just some sort of you know maybe it's a, a tractor driver. You know, something like that. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, but a tractor driver who just drives a tractor, not someone who has sex with the crops. You know what? <laughs> you know what I'm. You know what I'm saying? It's that kind of. You know, somebody appears all normal, and then just <laughs> at the last minute, you go, "Oh, hang on." It does what with the fruit? You know, that's that's all. That's all we're saying. You know, let's, <sighs> just let's. Yeah. You know, anyway. Right. Time for the band quiz. Now. Yep. Uh, is that what we're doing? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Dave from Melbourne. Hey, how you going? Good, Dave. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Now, for the first time in uh, in in our program's history, you shotgunned the quiz. Yeah, well. You just thought you'd get in early and say, right, I'm doing it today. Yep. Are you aware of just how rubbish the prize is? It, it's a piece of tape. How much more, like, orange can you get? It, it's nice, a, Dave. Yeah, it's and it, strangely, it's an it, it's orange as well. Orange, orange tape. Good you, work. You see, it's. I'm glad that you're happy with that. Yes, yeah, very. It's a meter of. Uh, I, t- I tell you what. I hope my missus hasn't been using up that tape back at our uh, house because when we send out them prizes, <laughs> I'll have to buy another roll. Bugger. Now, are you, are you familiar, Dave, with how the quiz works? Yeah, pretty familiar. Okay, um, for those who, who don't know, Ross, how does the quiz work? I read out um, a list of band names and uh, you have to tell me if it's a band or if it's not a band. 
If it, is, if it is a band, you say band. If it's not a band, you say not a band. And this is according to the Who's Who of Australian Rock, which we've borrowed from Miff Warhurst's desk. Uh, she graciously agreed to let us yeah. steal it on a daily basis. She, she, she didn't at first. She was on holiday. We just helped ourselves. And this is compiled by um, Chris Spencer, Paul McHenry, and somebody called... Who's that? Zibg Wow Now you're Band or not a band? Not a band. Not a band. No. <laughs> All right, let's go. What about man, not a man? That'd be a good hey. one. And you have to see if it's a man or, or not. Or, according to what's in my email inbox or what greets me occasionally on the phone, freak or not a freak. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You be the judge. Now you're talking. <laughs> right. Right then, are you ready for this? Yeah. Eyes down. I always think at that point there should be some music, you know, like a kind of a tick, 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 tick. Oh, Why eyes down. in the background? Yeah. It's time for the you band quiz. Yeah. It's time for the band quiz. You're getting into it's that, aren't you, Dave? It's for the band quiz, band quiz. Do you like that music, Dave? Oh, it, it, it's pretty catchy. It, it really would make the best ringtone ever. Right. Unfortunately, it's it's copyrighted, isn't it? It's not ours to but, give, Dave. You but, stole tape. What, what stops you stealing that? But, we didn't steal tape. We had it donated. Yeah. Okay, you stole the book. Yeah, we that's true. It. There's been a lot of thievery on this show. It has to be said. There's quite a lot of things. The whole happen. first week was about stealing. That's, that's very true, but uh, we were trying to correct it. Yes. Not encourage it. But okay. we will uh, arrange for a time where we play that uninterrupted okay. all the way through so you can record it as a ringtone. Not Ew. that we would encourage that. Oh. <laughs> Look at you going, um, we're going to lose everything we own in a massive... Co- that's the thing, Oh, Mish. it's fine for me. I've got no assets, but the, you've got a um, lot to lose. No, no. You've got your car. That'll go straight out the door. <laughs> nice car, that. OK, Right then, go. ready. Here we go. Eyes down. <laughs> Porcelain Bus. Not a band. Is a band. Uh, pork and Concrete. Not a band. Not a band. Um, soup in a Hat. Say again. Soup in a hat. Not a band. It's not a band. Vaguely Cambodian. Not a band. <laughs> not a band. Red House. A uh, band. Is a band. Volt Edge. Not a band. Is a band. <laughs> Practical folk music. Not a band. Is a band. <laughs> oh. The Vita Beats. Say again. The Vita Beats. Not a band. Is a band. Man on a Tractor. Not a band. Not a band. Rubberized. Not a band. Not a band. Cork Invasion. Not a band. Not a band. Nibs of the Devil. Not a band. Not a band. <laughs> Next Day Susie. Not a band. Not a band. Dirty Stinking Mice. <laughs> <laughs> Not a band. Not a band. Automatic Hairpiece. Not a band. Blimey, have you got the book with you? <laughs> no. Ken Wilson and the Blues Hutch. Not a band. It's not a band. He's good, he's good. Papier Mache Lady. Not a band. Not a band. Frogs on Crack. <laughs> <laughs> not a band. Not a band. Ferns on the Shelf. Not a band. It's not a band. Here we go, this is the last one. Oh, God. Venus Likes Lentils. Not a band. It's not a band. Oh, well, no, started poorly, pulled it back at the end. How's it looking? Well, 16 right and only four wrong. Ooh. Dave, you're a winner. Oh, yeah. Do ya? Oh, yeah. A bit Ex- too excited about the prospect of taking home electrical tape, Dave. Oh, yes. One metre of electrical tape. What are you going to do with it? We should ask people what they intend on doing with their prizes. What are you not... I've yeah. got no idea. When oh. we say it's electrical tip, it's not like... Well, it's electrified. Yeah, it's... it's Yeah, it can it, be electrified. It, could, it can be, yeah. We're <laughs> not sending live... <laughs> live. You open up, it's rigged up to a battery. I reckon you should use whatever's left over to tape a deck chair to Nana when you balloon her up so you could have Nana deck chair. Nana deck chair, like oh, the movie Danny deck chair. Yeah, that's a good Danny idea. Danny che- deck chair was, from what I understand, a pile of... Steaming, so I hope Nana Nana deck chair won't be the same. We, Making it hurt a lot more when it lands on someone. Indeed, we are still You're quite evil, Dave. Yes, have we met? No, <laughs> <laughs> no more freaks. But I've been watching you, <laughs> Dave. Hang on the line, and I will uh, get your address and send the police round. Is that all right? Excellent. Okay, hang Marvelous. on the line. Uh, <laughs> There you go. Mark them down on the list. Potential for, for <laughs> potential partners. Um, the we are still we we've pretty much decided we're going to release her on helium balloons, haven't we? Well, look, 
I, I don't want to say definitely because we, are, we well we haven't had anything that's topped that. We haven't yeah. had a suggestion that's that's topped uh, tying the original Nana um, as opposed to one of her many minions who are currently floating around the country to um, some helium balloons. Putting uh, the Triple J one eight hundred number and possibly the Ross and Terry website address yeah. on the back of her, letting her go and just seeing what happens. Now, clearly, we won't be here next week. No, um, but you know, maybe at some point during someone else's program, they might receive a phone call saying, "I've got Nana," and maybe they might have no idea about what we did with Nana and think yeah. that they have some kind of hostage situation exactly. on the line, and that could make for an interesting shift for that person. I really hope it's Costa. <laughs> I really do, because we said at, what was it, two, <laughs> like two minutes to 12, I said, just, it, it popped into my head, I went, oh, that that might be fun. Any spruikers? I just asked, yes. we've got spruikers, we've had a chat to them. But the thing is, if you're listening, is it Perth that are on the delay? I think Perth's three hours behind or yeah, something. Yeah, so, so if, you're, if you're in Perth, I'm sorry, I mean, you're still getting the show. But yes. it's just... You're ruining the magic. This is like magician secrets revealed. We're not supposed to tell anyone this, are we? Well, you know. Oh, like, they just... can't work it out for themselves, <laughs> you know? What a triple chair for all these years. There's a big conspiracy. Oh, it's on a <laughs> delay. You know, I mean, we could put it out live, but it would be dull. The One, the news would be on at the wrong time. And two, it'd be like the breakfast show would be on in the middle of the night. We would be on, you know, at breakfast time. Costa would be on... It, 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 Confusion and chaos. So at at, at at the beginning of his shift, Costa is going to get a lot of calls from spruikers. Yeah, is a lot of people, saying? yeah. So if you're now on the phone listening to us trying to get through, <laughs> if you're in, like, Perth going, I'm a spruiker, essentially you're about to talk to Costa. <laughs> Just and spruik it, stuff at him. And in He'll fact, work. in fact, that now means that we're broadcast. Yeah, so we're actually talking. Costa's on air now. My brain's going to explode. No, no, explode. We, we're on air, obviously. We're now live, right? But Are we live? We, we're live. <laughs> I think so. The fly's not anymore. But no. So we're actually live. It's happening now. But in the future, right, because we're essentially, because we're going back in time, aren't we? Have Are you we built a time machine? Forward in time, Yeah. This my, isn't a real studio. My is it? head has actually hit 88 <laughs> miles per hour. I'm about I, to have an aneurysm. I, I think you, if you, that uh, little song plays every time you tap the flux capacitor. You see? Now, so we're bl- broadcasting into the future, right? <laughs> no, we are. Think about it. The pe- to the people in Perth, we're broadcasting, but the future's all right. We're in the. Do you see what I mean? We're if, you, bro- if you thought that we had slightly odd people contact us, contacting us before. Wait until you... No, no, but the good thing is, you see, is that if anyone tries to stalk you, by the time they get to where you are, you've already moved on. You're two hours ahead, you see? You see the way I'm working on this? You know, they'll try and, you know, they'll try and follow you, but you'll be gone, you know? It'll just be... <laughs> are you bringing up the music? So ring us now, but really, you're ringing Costa. And, yeah, tell them about what you're up to. <laughs> Is that does that work? I My think it hurts. does. Oh, Why yeah. are we both dressed in Victorian costume? Right, I'm going to read out a bit of an announcement here. This is um, from uh, you might hear Terry in the background. Uh, we had a bit of a technical difficulty, but I'm just uh, going to read this out. It's ABC TV in Tasmania is making a new TV show about all kinds of collectibles, like collectible analysis. It says in, in brackets here, any sort of collectibles. Um, they'll be filming um, on Tuesday the 25th. Now, apparently, they start on Tuesday the 25th and, and they're doing a few days down there. Um, you, you'll be able to find out about that. And it's at the uh, Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery... Um, uh, where's that? Macquarie, Macquarie Street, Street, Hobart. Macquarie Street, Hobart. Uh, in the morning and the afternoon on that day. Uh, you can choose if you'd like to be there in the morning or the afternoon session. If you'd like to get along, you need to call... Uh, and that's by the name of Susie Moore uh, in Tasmania, and the telephone number is zero three six two three five three five three five. That number again: zero uh, three six two thirty five thirty five thirty five. And it's all sorts of collectibles. Or for a bit of a laugh, if you're in Tasmania, why not? Go, why not go down there with a tin of beans? Just you get say a, that you collect beans. Yeah, collect tins of baked beans. Is it rare? 
And then, uh, you know, because all, ne- all it really needs is for ten people to turn up saying they collect beans, and they'll be right now, and people will be going, oh, there's quite a lot of bean collectors. Oh, they're all this year. So nip down there, <laughs> give her a ring, Susie, or just give Susie more a ring <laughs> and tell her... <laughs> And if you've already recorded it from the radio, you might like to ring Susie and just play this on the phone. Yeah. She would love that. She'd love it. Give Susie Brewer. I'll give you the number one more time. It's 03. Please do. 62 35 35 35. Give her a ring. Tell her you're in Tasmania, even if you're not. And uh, (laughs) tell her that you just collect tins of beans. And that's for a TV show, ABC TV. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, all types of collectibles. If, obviously, if you do collect something, then... Uh, and you probably need to get out more. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you never know. Imagine if somebody went, I collect Terry's pants off the line. <laughs> oh, it's another one stop. of Terry's Can freaky you... stalkers. You need to stop that. What? Sorry. <laughs> you need to stop Sorry. that. Sorry. Because things will go missing from my clothesline. No, 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 I'm, st- no, I'm saying <laughs> stop it. Leave <laughs> Terry alone. I mean, if okay. you enjoy your work, that's fine. I don't mean it's fine, to, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, pack it in, not us, right? It's all right for you. You leave after Friday. <laughs> yeah. I go back to doing mid-dawns. What quality of phone call do you reckon I'm going to get at 3 o'clock in the morning? What I'm saying is, I'll, I'll uh, up the standard of the phone calls. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, people have got to realise that freaky behaviour isn't acceptable <laughs> unless it's part of the broadcast. Unless it's part of this show. And if it's this show, it's fine. <laughs> You know? Now, uh, speaking of freaky behaviour, we have had calls from Annabelle in Moree in New South Wales who's on a tractor. We had a call from Jason in Brisbane who has jumped on this bandwagon and said, look, I'm on an excavator. Does that count? No. <laughs> <laughs> we said tractors. Tractors and headers. That's what we're after. And uh, someone else who is on a tractor is Kevin. <laughs> Kevin from Gundawindi in Queensland. Turn your radio down in the background. Kevin, are you there? Yeah, I am too. How are you going? I'm not too bad. How are you? And Ross, how are you going? I'm good too, thank you. Oh, that's good. Now, you are in a tractor. You're not on an excavator, are you? It's definitely a tractor. Yeah, um, you're not being half It's a good header too, actually. So okay. It's got, it's got a big metal front on it. And, uh, yeah, it's used for cutting uh, all sorts of stuff like forage and uh, loose and hay. What okay. You, what it, and what are you driving? Hey? What are you, what are you driving? It's, it's a New Holland TV 140. Oh, oh nice. It's got a lot of grunt. Oh, yeah. yeah. It goes good, eh? How much horsepower? Uh, it's around 200, I think. I'm not exactly sure, but awesome. I think it's about 200. Sounds good to me. Yeah, no, she no, she goes good. Now, Kevin, you've you've made an, a, a little addition to your your tractor. What what have you done? Yeah. <laughs> I've actually got uh, I got me Nana. I uh, she's only a mini Nana. She's a real tiny one. I uh, cut her out. I stuck her on a bit of cardboard. Make it nice and hard. No, nothing soft there. Well, not until you suggested it, Kevin. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was talking to uh, one of those tree, uh, tree deodorizers. Oh, the little things. You, tree. Yeah, hanging, yeah. Her up, hanging her up in my cab. So she, my nana makes my tractor smell real nice. <laughs> <laughs> what what scent is the tree? What's nana making your, uh, your tractor smell like? Raspberry. Raspberry. Ra- raspberry nan. <laughs> right, that's a band yeah. name, band or not a band. Raspberry Nan. Nah. <laughs> that's great. That's good actually, because it would have been. Oh, that, was, uh, that, was, that would have to be a band. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you chose something fruity for the Nan, because what well, it would have been a bit sad if if you'd gone for the traditional uh, pine, then it would have been like he'd uh, had like a couple of wooden legs. <laughs> you were just smelling nanas. Because what do nans normally smell like? Lavender and mothballs. Usually. Piss and biscuits. Piss and biscuits. <laughs> No, new that's car scent, man. New car scent. <laughs> new nan smell. New nan smell. Yeah. Did you just say piss and biscuits? Yeah. Nan smell like piss and biscuits. <laughs> In a nice Kevin, name. does your nan smell like piss and biscuits? <laughs> no, no. no. I hope not. No. No, new, new nan smell, I said. New yeah. nan smell. New nan yeah. smell. I like it. Um, well, you've given... I'll tell you what. You've you've given anyone that, that drives a, a vehicle, um, you know, for a living, uh, I think you've, you could start a trend there. 
In fact, <laughs> in fact, I think what we should do is we should uh, go into production of these. I think that might be the uh, that might be the way to do it. Infuse the nans <laughs> with the smell. If you, uh, we'll ask, see if any taxi drivers are about there. They can make no. a similar. Yes, because taxi drivers have always got that paraphernalia kind of hanging around the cab. The magic tree. Oh, they're mad for a magic tree. <laughs> and that'd be great too, because you know the poor cab drivers off, often you know working late at night, picking up people who are slightly pissed, and having someone in the back of the cab going. No, that'd be is real that stylish, wouldn't it? Is that a nan? Is that a little nan? How, how pissed am I? Is yeah. that a nan hanging from the... So we'll, we'll get people to do that, uh, safe, and you'll be saving the knowledge that, that you started. I mean, obviously, don't put a full nan on the dashboard <laughs> of a car. There might be crashes and the like. It is sounding more and more like a euphemism, isn't it? Yes. A full-size nan. Full-size nan. <laughs> All right, Kevin, thank you very thanks much for, for calling. calling us. Oh, thanks for, thanks for having me on. Is it all right if I fade you down? Yeah, peep no, your horn. Peep you your horn. Can, so can, can you peep? Oh, yeah, beep. Have you got a horn? Have you got a horn? Right. We've got a horn, yeah, yeah. Can you hear it? No. No. Where's the horn? Oh, hang on, I'll jump outside. Can you hear it now? Yeah, That's now it. we can hear That's it. it. Don't, don't hurt yourself trying to jump outside the tra- tractor while you're driving it, Kevin, for God's sake. <laughs> we don't have that much insurance at the ABC. All right, I'm fading uh, you down again. Keep talking. Right, thanks for having me on. I'll catch you later. There he goes. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Off, off, almost like he was driving his tractor off into the night. Who into was? the distance. Who was that masked man? I don't know, <laughs> but he had a tiny nan that smelled of raspberries. Oh, cab drivers. We're still after spruikers. If you are spruiking or you know someone who is spruiking, one eight hundred O triple five three six. Ross Noble and Terry Siakis with you. Now, we've been talking about spruikers spruiking. and spruiking and all that kind and of pe- gear. And, and people who like to spruik. People who like, like you don't just have to be you know you don't just you have, don't have to, to be, be officially a, a spruker a spruker you know some people just like to spruik around the house yeah. as was evidenced by KJ who rang us from Q and really did just that for that's a, quite a large a long. that's quite a large amateur spruiking league <laughs> it's a whole society well someone who is uh, king of the spruiking hill is uh, one Mr Adam Spencer who joins us now Adam are you there how you going Terry how are you Roscoe. Very well Good. indeed, thanks. And very you're, well. You're spruiking something very, very special. I'm an absolute spruikophile, <laughs> and I'm here to spruik something that the Australian music industry has announced just today. It was just mentioned in your top of the hour news as well. On January the 29th, that's a fortnight from this Saturday, there's an event called Wave Aid happening at the SCG in Sydney where a group of amazing Aussie musos are throwing on the concert of a lifetime, an absolute one-off event to raise money for the tsunami victims of Southeast Asia. That's fantastic. And who who's involved in this uh, in this event? The people the people in charge of this have put it together in literally a couple of days. Midnight Oil have agreed to reunite for the gig. Oh. Wow! Powderfinger are playing. Yeah. Silverchair are playing their first gig in two years. Awesome. The Finn brothers are there. John Butler's there. Casey Chambers, Pete Murray, Missy Higgins, the Waifs. The Rights, which is one of these, you know, the Aussies love doing these super groups. There's yes. one of the guys from Jet and the Living End, Spider Bait, You Are My, Phil from Grinsbury and Dallas Crane, all getting in. And just this morning at the press conference, I announced, and half the people on the bill didn't even know this, Nick Cave rang this morning and said, I'm in. Nick Cave, hello. Nick Cave, Midnight Oil, Powderfinger, Silverchair, John Butler, Pete Murray, Missy Higgins, The Waifs, Casey Chambers, The Rights, on for Young and Old, Saturday Massive. fortnight, the 29th at the SCG. Awesome. And how do uh, people go about getting tickets to this event? Terry, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> The tickets go on sale next Monday morning through Ticketek. They're only 58 bucks. Almost all of the money is going directly to four major charities. And Ticketek are even donating their booking fee. So you charge a booking fee on the day to sort it all out. Most of that goes back to the charities as well. They're hoping for 30,000 people. You saw the cricket match, the amazing cricket yeah. match they put on at the MCG the other day. Well, if there's one thing people in Sydney like doing, it's eyeballing people in Melbourne and going, huh, we can give that a go. So Sydney's cricket ground is becoming a rock and roll heaven. A couple awesome. of weekends from now. Slightly disappointing if you want to watch some cricket, I would have thought, on the day. You should have seen at the press conference today, Bernard Fanning from Powderfinger is a massive cricket fan and after we'd finished the press conference and walked out on the SCG to have some photos taken, he just lost his shit. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent.
He just walked out of the middle, stood there looking at the pitch. Australia has just played Pakistan on. It was just going. Ah, 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 ah. So, <laughs> so there's, there's a possibility that you never know. He might knock out a few tennis balls into the crowd. Just there's every chance he might do the gig in whites, wearing a thigh pad and a protector. As long as he's got that funny little red patch around his his crotch, he'll be he'll be dead set. You know, his, that'll be his authentic. groin rub zone. Yes, I think well, that, his groinal it, area. It, it would be good to see everyone on the concert all doing it in full white. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the, the, the famous thing at the SCG is that if, you, if public streaking at the SCG during a cricket match is a $5,500 fine. So I'm encouraging Sydney siders who love a bit of music, I want to see Midnight Oil, Nick Cave, Powderfinger, Silverchair, etc. Get there on the day, run naked through the crowd. If you get busted, donate that $5,500 yes. to the charities involved. Yeah. Definitely. Great definitely. idea. So what's, what's the number again for tickets, Adam? It goes next Monday morning from Ticketek is where the tickets are on sale. They're 58 bucks each. This is absolutely massive. The Sydney Big Day Out has already sold out, so there's a lot of people who want to do some rock and rolling and have missed out, and it's a very different gig to what's going down at the yeah. uh, Big Day Out anyway, so double it up. The Oils reuniting for the gig and Silverchair's first gig in two years. Woo! That's massive. Next Monday morning, sales uh, tickets on sale at Ticketek. Triple J is helping promote this because the money is going to the good people of the uh, charities relieving the tsunami victims in Southeast Asia. Awesome. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Adam, for, no uh, at all. for I'm off sharing ring... that exciting news with us. I'm off to ring Susie from uh, ABC <laughs> TV in Tasmania to talk about my bean collection. Oh, nice. She's going to be very angry with uh, us. Uh, There's a good yeah. chance. Are you, uh, you going to be down there at the gig? I'm going to be emceeing on the day, don't you worry. Oh, Fantastic. nice work, nice work. So even, even if people aren't into music, just come down for yourself. If people want to see me because I've, I've, I've got my new look for summer. I've lost a few kilos. I'm oh. looking fit. If people just want to come and stare at me, you can't put a price on that, but I'll put a price on it, $58. There you go. <laughs> now, if you want to fade me down while I keep talking, I'll spruik as I go. Oh, Adam, great. thank you so much for joining us, and what a thrill this is, how the tables have turned. I get to fade you down. <laughs> Tickets on sale next Monday, and I didn't even say minge. Terry, there you go. <laughs> Tickets on sale next Monday morning, $58. People are getting together and helping the tsunami-ravaged areas of Southeast Asia. Midnight. I'm oh, really fading chairs. you down. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. But I feel a bit bad about yeah, no, exactly. down because he's actually giving opinion. out very good information. Yeah, exactly. But no doubt all of that information will be on the Triple J website. It will be, triplej.net.au. And go down there and uh, and see him. Just, just see Spencer, if nothing else. Go Absolutely. down and just look at him. Just look at him. He likes it you, when people look at him. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I kind of, you know what we should have done? We're, we're fools to ourselves. What? We never asked him to take an Anne on stage. A Nan? Oh, that'd be pulling the oh, piss, wouldn't it? Yeah, just a bit. Now, we've been talking tractors today, haven't yeah, we? I do like a tractor. We do like tractors. We've been talking to people on tractors and uh, we've had a very, very special phone call. Ashley, are you there? Yes. Now, Ashley, how old are you? Nine years of age. You're nine years of age. And where are you today? I'm on Hawkesbridge River. In uh, in New South Wales? On a What, what are you on? A houseboat. A houseboat. And you're hanging out with your dad today, aren't you? Yep. And what does dad do? He drives trucks with tractors on the back of them around Australia. So he delivers tractors to people around the country? Yeah. That's a pretty cool job. So you've pretty much topped all the people on tractors who've rung in today because your dad delivers them those tractors. Hmm. Does he... Have you driven the truck with dad? No, I'm just on a holiday with him at the moment. Oh, okay. And what? What um, is is Dad there? Yeah. Can we can we have a quick word to Dad, and then we'll talk to you again? Is that all right? Hello. Hello, is that Russell? That is. Hello. Mate, you have trumped every guy on a tractor that has rung us up today. Oh, I count them all. <laughs> you do. Do you do Do you do all brands? No, just red and blue ones. Red and blue ones. Did, Let me think. Which? Oh, hang on. Red and blue. It's not Ferguson Massey, is it? Who's See? who's who's red and blue? Kendall Holland. Ah, okay. I'm a fool of myself there. And how many how many tractors do you have on your truck at at, at any one time? Depending on the size, sometimes one, sometimes up to four or five. Awesome. Five tractors. Are you ever tempted to uh, give them a go, just as you're loading and unloading? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to get them on and off. Yeah. Oh, do you, do you, is it that thing of like, you know, when you're driving a car that's not yours, like if you're driving a hire car where you seriously just rip the guts out of it because you know it's not yours, do you ever kind of drag them off a little bit before you put them on or off the truck? 
Yeah, drive it like a starlet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, you have you have topped everyone today, so thanks for that. Can we can we have another quick word to to Ashley before we go? Yeah, I just put her on. Fantastic. Hello. Hello, Ashley. Have you been enjoying the show today? Yep. Has it been making you laugh? Yes. Have you learnt some new words? Mm, not really. Not really. Okay. Will you enjoy the rest of your holiday? How 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 much longer are you going to be on the um, houseboat for? Um, two days. Fantastic. Will you enjoy your holiday and have fun? And thanks for calling us. Do you want to do you want to say hello to Ross? Hello, Ross. Hello there. Okay, we've done that. Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> thanks for calling us, Ashley. It's okay. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Fading her down. Sorry, did you want me to converse with the child in greater depth there? Did I? <laughs> That's your favourite thing in life, isn't it? You like... You see, I'm always... <laughs> <laughs> like, I always say, uh, come on, come back. Come back to us. <laughs> the, um, yeah. You see, I'm always very careful uh, when talking to the... Oh, the glasses are off. <laughs> A wife of the eye. The... Um, oh, my <laughs> God. You see, the thing is, I, you know... <laughs> I'm always worried when talk. I don't want to, you know, when you're talking to the children, you don't want to scar them for life. <laughs> you love playing that freaky music with the laughing child, don't you? You can't do anything to them on air, but by crikey, as soon as they're off the line, you can get them. Oh, <laughs> I can see you down at some kind of play group <laughs> with a with some kind of spruiking device outside. I'm just, just so them. sad that after this Friday, I'll never get to do that to any more kids. It's going to be really sad. I, I've got a feeling that you will. <laughs> I, I've got a feeling I will download that, that as my ringtone. Yes. <laughs> 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 <sighs> Should we oh, hear some music? If you like. We might have a bit of an interview coming up in the last half oh, hour. Oh, yeah, that's show. a point, because we, we got a guest yesterday. Normally, at this mm. point, we're going, ring us up, ring us up. Yep. And, and we should talk uh, as well uh, at a later stage about, I guess, for Friday. All right. All very exciting. It is uh, time for our celebrity interview who uh this is our, our our interview subject someone we spoke to yesterday yeah because we were helping out uh jono in barrel who had a limited number of ingredients in his pantry yep. and this man who is a chef not just any chef not just any chef rang in and helped us out peter are you there i am indeed and whereabouts are you you're in sydney i'm in sydney in uh, sydney where are you from originally uh from north wales a little town called colwyn bay oh colwyn bay i've been there i've been to colwyn bay before what's the name of that little theater in colwyn bay um the cluid the uh, centre, I think. Yeah, yeah, I've been to that place, and it. Uh, in fact, I went there the night that um, Adam Faith died. <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, but you're over here now. But you were a, a chef for for someone a, a bit special. Yeah, I used to. Uh, I was a royal caterer, so we used to do functions at Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace, Highgrove, Gatcombe Park, all those sorts of places. In many ways, you prepared food fit for a king. Fit for a queen. <laughs> yeah. Did whenever this somebody said that this is fit for a king, did Prince Charles ever look a bit annoyed? He looked a bit depressed actually. Really? Because he's not quite king yet. No, and I don't think he ever will be. Now, I uh, had what have you got? Look, I'm going to cut straight to the point. Give me some dirt, Peter. You how how long were you working for uh, for the royal family? Um, it's about six seven years. Um, all together. It was a long time ago. It was when Charles and I were happy and they were together. That oh. was ages ago. Yeah, and, and William and Harry were just little rugrats. Little rugrats. And uh, and did you did you get... You would have got great dirt. Or gossip? Well, um, yeah, at Highgrove, um, I used to do functions because he was the Duchy of Cornwall, so he'd, he'd do these functions for all the... Um, all the peasant folk who um, actually rented his land because he's the richest landowner in Britain. And uh, we used to do this function, and they'd just pile all the food on the plates, all the um, farmers. And um, he'd come to the end, he'd be at the last, and there'd be nothing left. And he came, he turned to me and said, My God, he goes, the women have got more on the plates than the men. <laughs> <laughs> like that wasn't on. <laughs> Not a good thing. No. And uh, and what do royals, what do the royals like to eat? Um, well, 
Charles, very simple. Uh, I think we know. Well, we know that, but what does we know like pretty much eat? what Princess yeah. Di like to eat. Right. Uh, oh, don't even go. It's, I hope you didn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, but um, basically, it's quite simple food. Such as? Can you give us an um, example? Salmon. Charles was um, pretty much a vegetarian, and he ate all his organic um, vegetables from his garden. He's a vegetarian? That's weird when he goes out f- fox hunting. <laughs> well, I don't it? think he eats them. He just likes to, you know, they kill. <laughs> yeah. He just likes shooting their heads <laughs> off. He's... I'm not sure about that, but uh, so he's, allegedly. Oh, so he's a pretty much a vegetarian. Yeah. Sorry, he's a, so to, to all intents and purposes, he doesn't he doesn't eat the meat. I no, he used to eat salmon. Right. Yeah. So does that? But that would. I don't want to get too vulgar here. It would mean that Prince Charles, like in the flatulence department, <laughs> not or come on, you you know, if you're if you're chucking down nothing but nuts all day long. <laughs> You know, I mean, fair enough, he's sitting on a horse, so, you know, it's going to keep... Between him and the horse. It's going to keep things in, but, you know, that, uh, hmm, I must... Was he a bit on the pong, Pete, is what I think um, Ross is trying to I don't to know, because it was always a bit blowy when we were at his garden parties. Oh, ah, OK. Ah, there's no mistake, he held them outside then. Yeah. And, and who had, uh, who, who had the most extravagant or bizarre tastes? Like, what was the weirdest thing that you had to, or the most full-on thing you ever had to cook? Um... I uh, did a shoot for Prince Philip, and he liked um, scotch pies, and he used to eat them in abundance. What are scotch pies? Uh, I think um, Ross will probably be able to explain that one. Like, um, you, do you mean, like, because I'm thinking scotch egg, but do you mean... It's like a little pie with um, mint, savoury mint lamb in, and it's got, like, it's like a pie, basically. All oh, right, OK. Yeah. I do, not like those ones, uh, the gala pie. You know the ones that have the egg all the way through? Yeah, they're a bit hard to eat hot, because all the, all the aspect runs out boiling hot. Oh. And yeah. did you ever have a meal sent back? Did any of the royals ever go, Peter, what is this? Go back, try again. No, no, I mean, they were very humble, you know. Did you get to speak to them much? Um, I'd never got to speak to the Queen. I had to work there for eight years to actually meet her. But I met all the others. And what sort of... So, the, the Queen, like, obviously, because you were, you were in the kitchen, what, what sort of, like, on a daily basis, what would be... Because, you know, it's New Year, a lot of people are dieting, and so maybe these people might like to go on the Her Majesty the Queen diet, because she's always slim on the staff. <laughs> what, uh... What, 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 uh, an average day, what would uh, HRH be knocking back there? Um, well, it was like a hotel back in the palace, so you, we were, we just used to come in to do the functions, but oh. on a day-to-day basis, they'd have a set menu, like wholemeal toast for breakfast and stuff like that. I did nick the plate that came back that she'd eaten a wholemeal toast on. Yeah, Brilliant. that's what we want to hear, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's a, that's a, we had some, it was you yesterday, was it you that was telling us about nicking the... No. It was somebody else that was nicking the... Some dodgy Essex geezer, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. some Essex boy. <laughs> yeah, no, the... Look how you've bonded. Yeah, exactly. With your hatred of Essex. We know, he's from Wales, I'm from Newcastle. What no. did he your crystal doorknobs. Crystal doorknobs. Were you there the day that the uh, kerfuffle broke out over the stolen crystal doorknobs, Pete? Yeah, we, we couldn't open the door for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you there with a tray trying to kick it with your foot? <laughs> Did the, you know, the, the thing about whenever I read interviews with the royals and things like that, you know, that just all this money and pomp and blah, but really just a normal every... Were they ever normal everyday people in that? Did they ever come home, you know, in the early hours of the morning really, really pissed and ask you to cook them something ridiculous like spaghetti on toast? No, uh, no, no. I mean, I pretty much did functions for them. So, oh, um, okay. um, Princess Di made me a cup of tea in a, in a mug and it had the... Uh, Royal wedding on the on the mug, and that's the closest I can get to any <laughs> royal memorabilia tea towel. Oh, okay. Right. Oh. So So because that's what we were asking yesterday. The tea we, towels. The, the actual tea towels. They didn't have because obviously everyone in our you know everyone I know f- probably for about even now is still using a a, a royal wedding tea towel um, commemorative. They, they did they go for that or? Well, um, I had a mug of tea made for me, and it had the the royal. Um, wedding with the pictures of Diane Charles on it. And um, in Buckingham Palace, they had like glass cabinets with um, lots of weird things like Henry VIII's um, knife and fork, Queen Victoria tin with biscuits in it that was sent to the troops in the Boer War, and all it was like an antique shop basically. Wow, wow. 
that's so they cool. actually yeah because I suppose for the rest of us we have uh, you know we maybe have a photo and like a, some sort of picture on the fridge but they didn't insist that you use the royal commemorative tea towels in the kitchen no no they didn't but um, it, in uh, Highgrove where Charles lives he had they had all newspaper cuttings um, on the fridge and they oh. were all like the gossip from the sun and the mirror and the uh, about him wow. about what was going on at that particular time and I think the stories with them were about um, how the kids spent more time with the private detectives than they did with him yeah <laughs> so. all right Tell you what, it's a shame that you weren't looking after or you weren't working there when the kids were a bit older because imagine, you know, Prince Harry, he's a bit on the gear. Imagine if he had a function, you'd be cooking up all sorts of stuff once he got the munchies. I think you'd be cooking up some special cakes for him. <laughs> yeah, some secret cakes. Yeah. And where you work now, do they, uh, do they, you know, go around advertising the fact that you, you once cooked for the royal family? Um, I think they that's do, yeah. Uh, I work for a catering company in Sydney called Catering by Prudence. Yeah, why not drop it? You deserve oh, it. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll no, 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 no. I reckon it's you fine. deserve it. If you're having a function, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the phone. And book. do they, you know, do they, hey, that guy over there used to cook for the Queen. Do they um, get a bit of that? Yeah, well, yeah, it does come... Um, I, I, I do make uh, Christmas puddings, um, the Queen's recipe, because she used to have to make 3,000 of them every bloody year for <gasps> the Queen. 3,000? And that's just for her. And she gave them all out to all of um, all her staff and everything, so every year I used to get the Christmas pudding back that I'd made. No. Do you... I, I don't know. That's, that's evil. That really is wrong. <laughs> that is evil. Make a Christmas pudding. There you go. That you is evil. Did you do that thing of... I don't know whether this is particular to my family or whether everybody does this. I'm, I don't know. I don't know enough about Christmas puddings. When my mum makes the pud, she drops in, like, there'll be a coin or something lucky yeah. or whatever. Did you just chuck a few not quite right things into the puddings, Peter? Just used to throw in the crown jewels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How good would that be, picking cake <laughs> off a crown? Tea bag in the pud. Good on you, Peter. Thank you so very much for talking to us today. Yeah, love your show. Thanks oh, very much. Oh, cheers. And you, uh, you take care. OK, bye now. All right, later. bye. That was fun. That I was... like Peter. Yeah. Do you reckon he's single? Yeah, I, now there you go, a nice <laughs> chef, that would do you. I know I probably sound like your mum, but uh, a nice chef, that would do yeah. you nicely, you know, because he's going well, work- to be working odd hours, isn't he? You know. Yeah, and so do I. Yeah, exactly. That that's, works that's perfectly. That's what I mean. Yeah, you're going to find some, you know, somebody that's in, in sync. <laughs> you see? Always thinking. You know, you know what you need? You need a night watchman. <laughs> <laughs> a night watchman or a caterer, you know? <laughs> A night watchman. A night watchman, because, you know, obviously it means that, like, you know, you work in similar sort of times and also you'd be, uh, you know, trained in security <laughs> for when, you know... He'd have handcuffs, wouldn't he? Exactly. And uh, Ross Noble and Terry Siakas with you for only a few more minutes. And, and then, is there uh, a redneck Olympics? There must be somewhere. Be great. 100 metres, marry your sister. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was straight off the top of his head. Bang, like that, straight away. Never known Bang. the undersold. That's me. In Bang. fact, if it wasn't the end of the show, probably do ten minutes on the Redneck Olympics. Well, we've got... Hang on, what have we got here? Four minutes, 49 seconds. There we go. Do you want to go for it? Hell for leather? You you, you feel free. <laughs> I'll uh, start packing up. There and, you uh, go. <laughs> 100 metres, touch your cousin. <laughs> the uh, No, stop it now. One more, one what more. What are you doing? No, no, let's, one more. let's move on. It's not an evening with Jeff Foxworthy. The, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know you're in the Redneck Olympics <laughs> wedding. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. That's the fella. Um, uh, well, so that wasn't your gear that you were doing then? You what? Was that your gear that no, you were that doing No, that was my gear there. No, that was my gear. And then, uh, you probably tell because I did too. Sure? It was because I did 100 metres, then I did 100 metres again, when uh, really I should have done 100 metres, and then I should have done 1,500 metres yeah. or shot put or javelin. <laughs> See what I mean? But I did the same event twice, which you tells did. you that I was just going bang. It was in my head, came out my mouth. Letting down the magic of radio That's how there. it happens. It's, now, we, yeah. we were going to talk a little bit about our Borange songs because we have something special happening on Friday, which See? we're going to confirm this afternoon. Yes, we're going to give him a ring after the show. Is it, there's a very high chance, uh, hopefully, that we'll have um, Dicko. Uh, Formerly of Australian Idol. Now of My Restaurant Rules. Yes. Uh, who's going to be uh, our guest on the show on Friday. Hopefully, we'll give him a ring, make sure he's, uh, he's up for it. And um, after the show... And uh, basically, he's going to be... Uh, we'll ask him to judge the Borange songs. Now, if you've got a song 
that uh, contains the word borage. We've been sent in quite a few. We've got Say Borange by the Artistic Differences. That's uh, That's been sent to us on CD, so that's oh, ready to go. Oh, look how many there is now. Wow! So, oh, it may be Jesus. <laughs> and there's a whole... Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh. about ten of them up Ooh, there Oh, I like now. that title. What's There's that? nice. There's a nice one. I love S and M and Borange. I'll be looking forward to listening to that. Marvelous. Thanks very much. You scary, scary person. <laughs> F scary, scary person. Paint your palette blue and grey. So you um, can send your Borange songs to the website rossandterry dot com. Yes. And um, uh, also, if you want to download a Nana and. Um, Go to the download a DIY Nana and then send your pictures. Click on that and see if we've had any more pictures. You never oh, know. Okay. You, never, you never know your. You never know your look. Now we should point out we've got. Oh no, there's no more pictures. There's no, still in, Alex uh, Griffin and Jamie taking Nana to the beach at Ocean Grove and burying people her in, in Perth. Sand. Probably uh, going. Oh, so there's yeah. something to do for the rest of the day. Write your boring songs and uh, send them in. Uh, well, we the... really need them by the close of tomorrow, don't we? The yeah, end of yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, yeah, by two o'clock. Um... Because we don't do overtime here. We're not... <laughs> no, but pretty much <laughs> as soon as that red light goes off. We're already in the car. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's pretty... We're only... actually no longer in the studio. We're doing this on the phone. <laughs> yeah. From got, the car. I'm a, about to start a the very engine. long mic lead. And we're actually walking out. And also as well, um, we do uh, need suggestions for what we're going to do with the Nana that we have in the studio. Yes, our life-size Nana. And also, um, pretty much, if we don't get a better suggestion, we're going to tie it to helium balloons and release a... Uh, back into the environment. Mm, I don't want... We, we, we are still... We, I'm happy to take more suggestions. Yeah, yeah, We haven't yeah. had very many today. Yeah. And I'm, although there was... Uh, who rang us up? Someone rang up with a, a lovely suggestion. They said, why don't we uh, send her to a nursing home and, and present her to, you know, perhaps a, a, a pop, you know, Nana and Pop. Oh, present her to a mean. pop who probably won't know the difference and will be quite happy to have uh, a partner you know in a nursing only, home. You know any problem with that? What's that? Paper cuts. Paper cuts. <laughs> He's going to get a little bit over amorous the next thing you know. <laughs> Nana's got DNA everywhere. He's... Now, what else have we got coming up? Are we going to get Michaela's mum to give you an astrological... Well, that's right, yeah. We've still going got... over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me the old once over on the astrological Our ten-year-old front. supervisor, Michaela, who we didn't hear from today. No, she's But probably... I got the theme in anyway. Yes, exactly. Played it for another young Thank child. Thank goodness, another <laughs> child rang in. Uh, tomorrow we'll, uh, pro- we'll, we'll, just, we'll talk, tomorrow we'll talk to people in kiosks. You want to do that tomorrow? Yeah, might okay. as well. Oh, so yeah. if you're working in a kiosk or if you're at a kiosk... Yeah. Now, so that people know... Define kiosk. What, a, what do you mean? It's not quite a booth. Smaller than a shop, bigger than a booth. <laughs> <laughs> so could you be working at a toll, toll thing? Is that does that count as a kiosk? That's more than likely. Yeah, right. some sort of. It has to be an enclosed, some kind of enclosed working uh, area with a small window that you. Uh, <laughs> that's a sad thing. I think it's essentially it's a cupboard with an opening on the side, isn't it? Okay. That, no worries. Uh, that doubles as uh, a retail outlet. That's but tomorrow. that's all to come tomorrow. Ten o'clock um, tomorrow. That's right. Ten. Oh, blimey, yeah. Any time you want to. What? Is that me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I hate this. Yeah, it's all right. Look, we're dressed by Timmy the Timid Turtle. <laughs> You see, that's all you had to say. You just didn't want to say, did you? No, we're not. Do we choose to stay <laughs> in a friend's bond? Don't lose it now. You can't go just know, before the, the end clock. of the show. Come on. Is I've it, said it. Is it me? <laughs> I hate this bit. <laughs> we fly with Louis the Fly, who used to fly in our studio, but now flies with the angels. And a special thanks to the Pope for his services <laughs> to the balcony industry. <laughs> See, that's it. We're finished now. Triple J. Full 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 J, full J, full J, full J.